one of the most powerful men in the world. He was called Andre. Cruel, cold blooded, and completely unobtainable. The devil in a Brioni suit. The mere whisper of his name was like lethal poison that burned through the hearts of millions. Penetrating, in clear amber eyes that made grown men weep, and women burned with seduction. Behind the curtains, no one knew what he looked like, yet he was always in control. It was a reputation he had fought to establish, one that brought him power, wealth, and just about everything. When a series of unfortunate events lands her into the very strong, powerful arms of Andre, it was everything she'd been warned about. Stay in the loop and never miss a beat. Subscribe to my channel to get exclusive access to a plethora of exciting new audiobooks. From gripping thrillers to heartwarming romances and everything in between, I've got you covered. Don't let these captivating stories pass you by. Chapter 1 Dove Blinding lights like a lightning flash appeared suddenly, enveloping everything within its proximity, eventually fading into a blazed shimmer of neon red. The smoke twisted in a sensual artistic way, forming curls in the gloom, illuminated only by the age-speckled bar lights. It instantly lifted the brooding mood and lit the room, hundreds of conversations in loud-pitched voices, all competing with the heavy rock music that dominated the atmosphere. The rancid smell of smoke, whiskey and wine coated my nostrils, a jangle of voices strung off the wall like soothing piano chords. As I wind my way through the warm bodies mumbling a soft apology to those I bumped along the way, Charlie's delicate hands were gripped tightly around mine tugging me along like a pro to her destination, almost like I was a puppet on strings. Against the loud electronic music, my head was pounding so loud that it almost felt like my brain would soon retort to shutdown mode. I need to get out of here. Charlie. A high-pitched squeal followed. Instantly, my heart hammered like a beating drum, raced with a strange sensation. I knew that voice. I recognized that voice. It was one of Charlie's best friends. One. They never stuck long enough around me to remember their name. What was it again? Ariana? Arabella? Holy cow, I was horrible with names. Aria. Dove, you remember Aria, right? Aria, this is my sister Dove, Charlie introduced with her blinding wide-eyed smile that paved the way for those pearly shiny set of whites. She held onto my arm firmly in case I tried to hide behind her. Soft green eyes sparkled brightly as she watched my so ever still reaction. Aria. I was close. My eyes wandered to Aria's dark glance filled with underlying scrutiny, and I fought away the intimidating feeling of those noticeably insincere eyes that bore into mine. For a tiny bit, just a bit, I had almost forgotten how much Aria tolerated me in the presence of Charlie. Aria was leaned back against the bar her dark hair lying delicately over the bare shoulder of her sequined dress, my eyes dropping momentarily to her low-cut neckline, her displeasing gaze with the smile of one who is not pleased to see their best friend's younger pathetic sister. Everything about her screamed gorgeous, it was like warning signs went off in my head convincing me that she was automatically better than me because she was pretty. It wasn't anyone's fault but mine. Aria was beautiful. I was just insecure. You're gorgeous dove, you're strong, you're darn it. No, I'm not. The way her glorious lean body was delicately shaped and fitted around the tight dress, a dress I would, could never have dreamt of wearing. I was somewhat anxious of my outfit and how it compared to hers. Aria looked like she had just happened to walk straight out of a Vogue magazine, effortlessly without blinking an eye. My lips parted with anxiousness as I was prepared to speak, to say anything, but instantly regretted the choice, feeling the anxiety of Arya's dark eyes as they discreetly burnt a hole into the back of my head. Am I smiling? Gosh, I hope I am. Oh, this is your sister, Arya said with a low chuckle. She's being nice. Weird. Or maybe I was being strange for automatically judging her. Hi. It's so nice to meet you, Dove. Chapter 2 Dove I never knew how to properly converse with boys. Ever. Charlie was always effortless with it. Somehow it just clicked with her. 
She knew how to talk to them, she didn't, she never stuttered. She never hid behind large rimmed glasses that covered her soft, delightful eyes, or hid behind her sister that provided a thick blanket of comfort whenever boys approached her. No, Charlie did what she knew best. A shy, bashful smile would appear on her lips, and she would eventually lure them into her good graces with a slight giggle, twirling her hair in a girlish manner. And I watched. Even as I stood, blinking as slowly as my brain could process, I couldn't the believe the enchanting sight in front of me. Except it wasn't a boy, it was a man. A full-grown, large, ginormous, heart-shattering, beautiful creature. Holy baloney. Was I dreaming? If I was or wasn't, it was fine either way. I shook myself out of my rambling thoughts as I slowly watched a pair of striking, penetrating amber eyes like a splinter of amber fire caught in a viscous lantern that shined with such sweetness, eyes like a reflection of the sun, melted with the richest pot of gold and entrapped with the warmth of smooth honey. Iso Pung. I tried to avoid his commanding gaze that slightly sharpened and shifted from the door before capturing my frame in a period of time, but I couldn't. I couldn't stop staring, drooling at the sexy competent man. Goodness gracious. I have to breathe. Breathe dove. Please send help. My eyes remained fixated on his dark amber eyes, feeling the air around us thicken into something unexplainable, something I had never felt before. Drawing a deep staggered breath, I could feel my heart continued pounding as if it would break away from my chest and run. I rubbed my sweaty palms against the jeans I was wearing despite the dread feeling of coldness, I was sweating a bucket. He was a man strikingly tall in a dark suit, built like a stallion, lean and powerful, and he looked a bit out of place with him standing in front of a ridiculously looking scared and bedraggled girl wearing teal combat boots. He threw his head downward, bending slightly to avoid impact with the ceiling, reminding me of how tall he truly was. This isn't a man, more of a tree. Dove what? He was all gorgeous golden fair skin topped with longish black as night locks. Then I watched as his perfectly shiny hair flowed down his back like black ink on a tilted piece of parchment, but the faintest light made the black strands reflect an indigo blue by each curve. Soft and silky, I could tell apart each strand. There were enough of his luxurious thick and silky curls for anyone to run their hands through. A few strands of locks were tied back, depicting the path to his sculpted cheekbones that were beautifully accented to his perfect face. Stern straight brows furrowed deeply, dark deep pools of amber eyes that melted into mine, framed by lush long lashes that curled slightly at the end. His mouth had full curved sensual pink lips that pressed together in a stern expression, as he stalked towards me. He was blindingly attractive and captivated my gaze, ensuring my focus was on him, and him alone. His walk and stare was as poisonous as the air after a nuclear bomb. Chapter 3 Dove Silky persuasive voice pleaded, telling me over and over again that I needed to calm down, gently stroking my back, rubbing miniature circles like the way one would do to comfort a child who had nightmares in the middle of the night. As if the gesture was almost unnatural to him, I felt him lift a hand, hesitantly, and then brushed back a strand of dark curl that had fallen across my freckled dotted face. His elegant calloused fingers scrapped against my cheekbone, then caressed the shell of my ear. Breathe, raspy voice with a deep timbre cooed, effortlessly smooth like butter. I struggled to make sentences, spluttering out useless strings of words as the sinking feeling of panic swept over me, a temporary paralyzing fear. Shish breathe. I wanted to. I wished. I didn't like the idea of a body against mine when I felt like dying in an endless pit of emptiness, but this felt different. My breath quickened in tandem with my racing heartbeat, and I used every possible muscle, useless piece of strength inside my body to stifle a whimper. I wanted to say something, I wanted to speak, respond in disagreement, but the pure terror I felt suffocated by the very breath intake of air that flowed out of my mouth. The room started to spin, my vision blurring into distorted colors and circles, fear now became a tangible living force that crept, sneaking onto me like some hungry beast immobilizing me and holding my brain captive. My hands gripped a fistful of his perfectly ironed shirt, tightening my hold on him, as I forced myself to breathe deeply, steadily in spite of my state of panic. You're okay. Hey look at me. 
Just look at me, me only. You're okay, champ. His gentle resonant voice would say. I'm okay. I'm okay. You're okay, dove. I repeated the mantra that had been drilled inside my brain within the last year. Slowly, I could feel every muscle in my body relaxing, my heartbeat returning back to its natural circadian rhythm. I could still feel the fear in my chest, sitting there like an angry ball propelling me towards an anxious exit I didn't want or need, waiting to take over, but perhaps it only wanted to protect me from danger before it ever occurred. Eyes slowly fluttered open, my hands flew to my mouth as I tried to stare at the lifeless body that remained on the cold ground, but I couldn't see anything except the trail of crimson blood that had started to accumulate. Or rather, he wouldn't let me look. He kept my head muffled against his pristine shirt, quickly leading me out of the stall. Unbeknownst to me, the nightclub was empty, barely a single sound emitted in the room except for the mortifying slow clicks of his expensive-looking shoes as the man tugged me towards a deserted table and sat me down. I had just witnessed murder. I could be considered an accessory. Why did he kill that man? Did they know each other? I swung my leg from the chair, letting my thoughts run wild in my mind. It had been a while since my last episode. I didn't expect to break down in front of the poor stranger, but I was beyond blessed that he didn't ask any further question. If anything, he sounded calm and patient like he knew exactly what to do. After a few silent moments, I finally found my voice. I did, did you kill him? I spoke, shell of a whisper. Do you, are you going to kill me now? He handed me a bottle of water, our fingers brushing past each other in a delicate manner, leaving a hot trail of tingles in its wake. I'm going to be dead due to heart palpitations. Help. Chapter 4 Dove The fancy dark elevator doors opened. I politely refused to be sent home, so Mr. Dark offered to let me follow him on an interesting field trip, an underground bar. With the exception, I had to stay beside him at all times. Mr. Dark held onto my soft frame, his grip firm and possessive as we winded through the heaps of sweaty, disheveled teenagers. The hand on my waist slid over the swell in my spine where it had connected to the rise of my backside. His calloused palm flattened against the spot, drawing me even closer, eliminating what modicum of space there had been between us. It left no doubt in anyone's mind who I was here with, and that alone sent a thrill through me that I knew was wrong. Bad dove. I let my hand momentarily fall against his, rushing past his calloused skin without warning, and felt his whole rigid body tense up. My skin burned under his lethal touch from where he had touched me, like an explosive combustion that engulfed and consumed a moth that had fluttered dangerously close to the candle flame. What just happened? Oh sugars. Eh sorry, I mumbled in a soft voice. I let my gaze drop downward instinctively, feeling his stare become much more sultry. I didn't mean to touch you without permission, not that I would ever touch you without your permission. I'm not that kind of person, you know. His beautiful dark eyes held my face. I swallowed hard. The juxtaposition of him in a room filled with people, while staring at no one but little old me, was overwhelming. Dove. His voice was as soft as velvet and incredibly sexy in a macabre way. I shivered unsinfully. Silent deep breath brushed past the edge of my ear, the aroma of cologne surrounded me before he whispered low, take a deep breath. Right cool cool cool. That's on my to-do list. I glanced up, my eyes caught in his gaze all over again, directing a soft smile towards him. Like a dark impenetrable forest, Mr. Dark's expression stayed the same. Darn, I wanted to see him smile. Mental note to myself, tell Mr. Dark a funny joke so I can make him smile. Life was too short to spend moping around. Cold? A low, commanding voice asked. His large, cold hand slid down my waist and settled on my hips, patting it softly as to ask me if the gesture was comfortable with me. I shook my head from side to side while my eyes shimmered with acceptance. Are you? Do you need your jacket? Oh sugars, I shouldn't have accepted it. I've heard you can die from hypo, hypo, what's that word again? I googled it. My face scrunched with bewilderment as I lock eyes with Mr. Dark's deceptively peaceful dark ones. Hypothermia. 
He shook his head, one side of his beautiful full lips almost tugging upward yet his almost existent smile fell as his softened fixated gaze slightly darkened to observe another thing. I snuggled close to Mr. Dark, delighting in the way he made me feel protected as he led me through the sweaty, enthusiastic crowd. A young man let out a shrieking yell, flinging his arms in the air, pushing roughly as opposed the heaps of dirty bedraggled teenagers before colliding jarringly against me. Chapter 5 Four Months Later Dove Hey kid. The pounding on the door jolted me awake. Frantically, I sat up on the bed trying to wash away the sleepiness from my eyes as the day had already started. Get out of there. It's breakfast time. Bellamy told me to come get you, Darcy's harsh voice called out. Good morning. I replied softly. Um, I'm not hungry. Good thing you don't have a choice. Come downstairs, Dove, or I'm coming in there and dragging you the fuck out. I will ugly cry and stomp if you do that. Grumbling softly, I swung my leg to the other side before stepping out of bed. I am so not a morning person. Okay. My eyes flickered over to the nightstand, only to see that I was awake about ten minutes before my alarm would have rang. Normally Darcy would have burst into my room without knocking, but I supposed I was a bit grateful for the fact that my older brother picked up some manners overnight. However long those would remain for. I sighed, almost glaring at the clock. There was no point in going back to bed, only to hit snooze multiple times like I would normally do, so I decided to start the morning with a head start. It took me a few minutes to tidy up my bed, before I headed to the bathroom to do my business and clean up. Business ha. Huh? What a funny word. When I reached the bathroom, my feet paused, halting my steps as I came to take in my disheveled reflection in the mirror. It was like a itch. Looking in the mirror had always been a difficult thing to do, because then all my self-doubt would start pouring in, but then again I couldn't help it. Standing in front of the sink, my curious gaze moved up, traveling to my reflection only to be disappointed a broken shell of a girl with eyes filled with tears, tangled brown curls and desolate brown eyes. I hate how I look. I wished I was a bit more like my older sister though there was nothing else I could do to change it. There was no point in crying over spilled milk. Hurriedly, I jumped into the shower then began to mentally go over my schedule for the day, and making sure I could fit everything I wanted to do into my day. I made a mental note to visit the library, to find a new book to read, and to stop by the bakery later, to visit Silas. He was my favorite old person, okay fine, the only old person I knew but don't tell him that. After my shower, I picked out some clothes to wear, ignoring the visible stares of the cuter outfits in my closet. Not today. I huffed a sigh, glaring back at the clothes I wished I had the courage and body to wear, only to settle with one of my usual white oversized shirts with the font Mean People Suck, lied blue jeans and my dark combat boots. Without so much as a stare to debate whether it looked nice, I adjusted my large rimmed glasses and grabbed hold of my white hoodie throwing it on my bed so I wouldn't forget to take it with me. I didn't bother brushing my hair since it would only result in whimpers and hopeless crying. Instead I used my cherry scrunchie, my favorite scrunchie to tie my wild dark curls back into a half bun, letting the rest of the tight untamed curls cascade down my back. Feeling anxious, I debated changing into a different pair of jeans before I heard a soft knock at the door. Chapter 6 Dove. I I. I made the drink, and I. I G gave it to him and C Constance, she told me not to tea talk to them, and I didn't. I S swear I didn't, but, but he started making me feel really really nervous B by saying weird things. I D didn't want to disappoint Constance because I told H her I would do it. And then, and then, tears burned my eyes, my lower lips trembling as I summarized the story for Mr. Dark. Shish. He wiped a lone tear with the pad of his thumb, soft fingers brushing against the shell of my ear. Relenta. Stop crying. Tell me. Slow down. I nodded, suppressing a sniffle. I? I didn't. I didn't want to talk to him, but I, I didn't w want to be rude, you know? So so I just nodded. 
I tried to wipe the hot tears from my eyes with my fingers, failing to suppress a sob. T then he he poured tea the drink on me, and then everyone see could see my, my bra underneath. It was so embarrassing, because I didn't like how he, he was L looking at me. Everyone, everyone could see. Then the tears broke through my barrier, and without warning, they coursed down my cheeks and painted my shirt sleeve wet as I tried to wipe the frantic tears aside. I didn't even understand why I was crying. I hated the fact that I couldn't stop crying. I hated the fact that crying was my release yet my torment as well. I was such an inept. I was useless. No wonder Papa didn't want me anymore. I clenched a fistful of Mr. Dark's massive jacket, my hands wrapped so tightly around the cloth that my nails dug into my palms. Breathing was hard. Breathing felt hard. Really hard. As if I had just ran the London Marathon. I could feel my whole body seizing, and it felt like I was literally choking on my own intake of breath. I felt trapped like a visitor in my own body, overwhelmed by the feeling of being underwater in the ocean, just below the surface with nothing under me, and no way to get up for air. No. No. I need to get out. Shish, his low masculine voice cooed into my ear, warm calloused fingers swept my curls aside. Respirare. Breathe with me. Breathe. I couldn't. I couldn't breathe. Such a trivial word, yet I couldn't carry out the simple action. My hands began to feel clammy, my eyes burned with tears. I could feel my heartbeat sped up, taking flight only for my chest to weigh me down and fall and drown into the ocean of despair. The look on Mr. Dark's tranquil face slowly faded into one of worry. My body shook furiously, shivers running down my spine and left my toes curled. If I didn't calm down soon, I'd eventually pass out. I had done it before. I couldn't count how many times I had worked myself up so much that I passed out. Chapter 7 Dove Dove Massive calloused hand cupped my cheek, another hand brushed a strand of mousy lock of hair from my face. Wake up, Andre deep familiar voice demanded. Groggily, I shook his hands away, feeling the overwhelming blanket of sleep draped over me, luring me to comfort. All I want to do is sleep. Sleep. I need sleep. Listen here, I'm trying to sleep here, so go away. I stifled a loud yawn, cuddling closer to the tall, muscular body. So warm. Just let me sleep. My head felt foggy, like that one time I attempted to drink alcohol, but I hadn't drank a drop. It felt as if every eyelash weighed more than it should, it felt as if I was slowly falling into an ocean of despair, almost giving in to the helplessness. No no Topolina. His warm hands made contact with my skin, tilting my chin slightly upward so I could shake the sleep away. Though it was literally quite impossible. I wasn't a morning person, so I relished in taking naps during the day. Naps that would last for about three to four hours. If I didn't take a nap during the day, I would be quite insufferable later in the evening. My lips curved into a frown, faint sparks exploding through my nerves, large warm hands planted on my hips, hefting me against his body. I encircled his strong neck with my arms, slowly lowering my head and snuck my face into the crook of his neck. So warm. His touch sent my heart in a flurry of wild beats. Warmth crawled up my neck, if you touch my, my hot buns, I'm going to karate, karate sucker punch you. My voice slurred towards the end. His long slender fingers threaded through my hair and gently rubbed the back of my neck. Stop fucking moving, gentle masculine voice murmured like a musical lullaby to my ears. I squirmed slightly when his huge steady hand slid under my jacket, caressing my back. Shish sano. Sleep. Sleep. The next few minutes spiraled through my mind like a kaleidoscope. I didn't remember much, Though certain words and voices kept playing in my head over and over again like a broken record. Andre deep masculine voice persuading me to change out of my sticky clothes before I slept. His delicate skillful fingers attempted to sweep my tangled dark curls into a messy bun, grumbling incoherent profanities as they came undone. Time and time again. Eventually I fell asleep at some point, relishing in the soft touch of his fingers, lingering as they rubbed circles on my back. 
I woke up suddenly, eyes snapping wide awake, as my horrid nightmare came to a conclusion, every single thought in high definition. My eyes took in the absence of light, and without a doubt, I knew I had slept too long. The bedroom felt like a place of safety, tidied yet desolate almost like it had once been deserted. The decor was painted with dark blend of colors, ranging from gray to midnight back, and a large, neat king-size bed rested against the windows, beautiful stars that filled the starry night like snowflakes in the night left a sense of warmth inside of me. Chapter 8 Dove Unknown, I'm here. I glanced at my phone screen, unable to keep the squealing that escaped my lips, excitement due from the unknown number that had sent me a text. Andre. Last time I had forced him to accept my phone number, even though I was sure he would delete it with any chance he got. He didn't. Oh my sugars, he texted me. F. Who is this do I know you skeptical smiley face? Unknown, Topolina. Come outside. F. SHSNNDCJCBB OK smiley face. Dove. You need to eat breakfast before school, Charlie yelled out as I rushed to grab my white socks illustrated with little panda designs on them. I attempted to shove my legs into my gray sweatpants, jumping slightly to fit into them, and matched it with an oversized gray tank top that covered my impressive washboard abs. Without hesitation, I grabbed my backpack and hurried to find my large rimmed glasses only to discover that I was already wearing them. Oh sugars. Where's my sweater? Panic began to fill inside me, and complete terror gripped my chest like a suffocating hug that was slowly sucking the life out of me from the inside. I glanced down at my hands, feeling the moisture of sweat dancing across my skin. My sweater was my only comfort if I couldn't find it. What would happen? With my clammy hands I gripped a fistful of my shirt as I attempted to calm down my rapid heartbeat, slow enough for me to catch my futile breath. Breathe Dove. Breathe. Dove. Breakfast. Charlie's sweet feminine voice repeated. This time though, I could hear her hurried steps dashing through the stairs, and they only seemed to only get louder with each pounding step. No thank you. I'm, um, you don't have to give me a ride to school today. I'm sorry I didn't tell you in time, but is it okay if I go with a friend? If it's not okay with you, then it's fine. I can just let my friend know. A friend? She asked incredulously. I let out a quiet grumble under my breath when I finally spotted my gray sweater under my pillows. Are you kidding? Oh my god, Dove. You could have fucking told me that. I bet you did this on purpose. My heart fell to my stomach with pure disappointment at the tone of her voice. My eyes filled with tears thinking about how angry she sounded and how it was simply my fault. Charlie was right. I am selfish. I only care about myself. Charlie, no, I didn't. Forget it. No, um, no. Your feelings are valid as well. We can leave together if that's what you want. I rambled taking hurried strides to reach the door. When I opened the doorway to let her in so I could explain everything, Charlie was already gone. I'll text her so I can apologize. I have to apologize. It's my fault. I shouldn't been so selfish. I hope she's not angry. Chapter 9 Dove Charlie had insisted on dragging me to another nightclub, but this time I politely refused, promising that I would definitely accompany Charlie and Aria on their next outing. Charlie didn't agree. She thought I was acting weird and I needed to up the dosages of my medicine. I pondered her advice but instead I chose to stay in bed, feeling lazy and groggily from my study session. I was sure that all the energy I previously had was drained. I couldn't even move my feet slightly to get them to start working. Every bone in my body seemed to halt, waiting for the signal, my signal to start working efficiently. I snuggled deep into the covers before rolling over to the other side, and softly grumbled under my breath due to the lack of sleep. It didn't make an ounce of sense. I was beyond tired, I was exhausted but I couldn't sleep. Every nerve and muscle inside my body were still working overtime to keep me awake and fidgeting. SHSNDNFJCB Sugars Finny? 
Are you awake, baby? The slight creaking of my bedroom door alerted me. I snapped my head sideways to the doorway, anticipating the return of my older brothers, but instead I was met with dark hazel eyes, the shade of mine. Mama. A small smile drew on her heart-shaped lips as she took in my current state. Late night session. I nodded slowly, feeling my eyelashes flutter against my skin. I'm tired but I don't feel sleepy. Mama came over to my bedside, bending down slightly to take a seat by my bed. Soft delicate fingers brushed my dark curls past my cheeks, caressing my skin with each warm touch. Is it your thoughts again? Have you taken your medicine? Reluctantly, I shook my head feeling slight embarrassment that I hadn't been taking my pills. It wasn't my fault, I disliked them. The pills made me feel weird. Baby, you have to take your medicine. Okay? She asked in her that's final voice, and I nodded my head. They wouldn't hurt me, right? They're just medicine. Mama squeezed my shoulders, her warm smile shone down my frozen state. My body squirmed just a little as I felt my muscles relaxed. I could feel the anxiety and uneasiness inside of me dispersing as I inhaled a certain intoxicating scent, clutching tightly onto the clothing cradled around me. The familiar scent seemed to help calm me down, even if I didn't know why. Dark eyes flickered down to the thick, dark puffer coat cradled around me. Her lips pursed in thought as she eyed me carefully. Weird, I don't recall you having this type of fabric. Where did you get that? Oh. Sugars, sugars, sugars. Where did I get it? Where did I get it? Um, a friend gave it to me. It's just, it's just a coat. Is, is that okay, mama? Can I wear it? Of course, baby. A slight chuckle escaped her lips. Of course. Just be careful. Remember be careful of boys, okay? I want you to focus on your studies right now. You don't need any boys disturbing you, and I wouldn't want you to get hurt, especially when we just got you back. Hum. Not all boys are bad. Andre isn't. Chapter 10 Dove Why are you angry? I asked the powerful magnetic man beside me, with a permanent scowl complimenting his attractive plump lips. A small squeal escaped my lips as he maneuvered the predatory beast of a car, nearly swerving past another car. Mental note, do not make Andre angry angry. A. Are you angry at me? Did I um do something to make you mad? Dove. Yes? He called you Dove. Andre grunted lowly running his long slender finger through his dark curls, and I caught a glimpse of my cherry scrunchie on his wrist, adding an unusual splash of color to his sleek dark outfit. I call you Dove. I cocked my head to the side, a bewildered pout settled on my lips. You're angry because, because Payson called me by my name? I do not understand. I am confused. How do you know him? Payson? He's my sister's boyfriend. Is that why you're mad? You're mad because he's my sister's boyfriend? They're in love so I would be a little mad at you, if you're interested in Payson. Wait, are you gay? I'm all about expressing yourself but Payson is off limits, he's taken. He's a no-no zone. Okay? Cristo Santo, Andre shook his head, a dark glare directed towards me. With a tatted hand on the wheel, he commanded the car effectively pulling to the side of the deserted street. How fucking clueless can you be Dove? Are you really that gullible? Jesus Christ. My jaw slacked slowly, and I stared at Andre, flabbergasted trying to figure out if he had just said the very statement I heard. Are you really that gullible? I inhaled sharply taking a deep hardcore intake of O2C, as an attempt to calm down my pounding heart. I had never heard Andre speak to me with such, such a nasty tone. He sounded mean. Very mean. And I do not like it. P please don't. Don't speak to me like that. If you're angry at me, then let me know why so I can fix it. I don't like those kinds of words, you know that. I spoke softly playing with the zipper of his coat. If you don't want to be friends with me, then that's, that's fine, but you don't have to be mean about it. Immediately, without hesitation, dark eyes fixated on me, picking me apart with a single darkened glance of his golden eyes. 
I had always felt like his eyes conveyed the hidden emotions words could never interpret, but in a single moment, I had been proved disastrously wrong. Those tendered sweet amber eyes now gazed at me with a hidden malevolent glare. You're fucking annoying. You're nothing but a child. Why would I want to be friends with a child? Your rambling is highly distracting and irritating. You don't know the first thing about taking care of yourself. You're a baby, and there is nothing I hate more than babysitting. I, I didn't know you, you felt that way. Tears filled my eyes at his hurtful words, burning through my rigid protective barricades. I tried to look brave, my lower lip trembled as I surpassed a sob robbing me of the ability to speak, barely allowing a breath to be drawn. I'm as sorry. My voice broke down at the last word, and I didn't, I couldn't bring myself to gaze into those eyes I had once found comfort in. Right now they terrorized me, and left a rotting tension unsettled deep in the pits of my stomach. I was afraid that if I so much as paid a glance towards his way, every attempt at covering up my disappointment and hurt would undone and result in tears. Chapter 11 Dove I stared at the container of pills, having already swallowed my normal dosage, but decided to increase it slightly today. An immediate overwhelming head-rushing state of serenity draped over me like a thick blanket, followed by a slow, steady and relaxing calm like I was riding a wave with no exact destination. All I needed was little boost to get enough the school day today, and hopefully I could make it through my first class of the day without feeling the need to jump out of my skin. Bambi? Gruffly deep voice yelled out. Bryn. Get down here. Aubrey said you need to eat breakfast before school. I blinked slowly, my brain attempting to catch up with the movement of my feet, and though I was alert, it felt like with every step I took, I was getting shifted backwards. I could hear loud voices in harmony as I descended down the stairs, but my brain wouldn't allow me to make translate their words into meanings. Good morning champ. Bellamy greeted, handing me a bowl of oatmeal. I mumbled a soft good morning in response to his greeting, placing the bowl on the counter before grabbing my cold brewed coffee from Bryn. Everything okay Bambi? You look a little out of it today. Bryn turned me around toward him and took my head in his soft graceful hands forcing my eyes to meet his. His watchful gaze looked me up and down, coming up with a diagnosis for what was happening to me. I shook my head slowly trying to reassure him. I'm fine, a little sleep deprived but but I'll be fine. Hum, you look fine but if you feel any different, let me know and I'll come and get you, okay? I wanted, I needed to open my mouth to respond to his statement, but all I could do was nod, shutting my eyes tight and clinging to Bryn, my fingers bunching up the fabric of his black leather jacket. Hey, on second thought, maybe you shouldn't go to school today. No no. I'm fine seriously. I took in a slow, deep breath and released it nodding so Bryn could be reassured from his worries. I couldn't miss any more classes than I had already missed this past week, Mama would be furious. Just stay home kid. Darcy grunted swallowing a forkful of berries. He had a nonchalant stare as his anxious gaze flickered over me, concealing any worry he ever presented. I sighed slowly desperately wishing they could, would understand the situation. No dark. I really can't miss any more days. Okay. Okay boys. Finny, I want a text from you every hour telling me how you feel, and if you don't respond then I'm coming to get you. Deal? Bellamy asked in his no no that's final tone he used whenever he needed me to listen. Mama. Bellamy softly interrupted me. Blake will understand, alright? Missing another day is not a big deal. I wouldn't want you passed out on the side of the road somewhere. Reluctantly I nodded then grabbed my iced coffee from Bryn, giving him a slight scowl in response to our previous conversation. Without giving my brothers another opportunity to chastise me about walking to school alone or trick me into staying home against my wishes, I quickly slipped into my dark Converse shoes and adjusted the buttons of the white long-sleeve button sweater I garnered the courage to wear this specific morning. Chapter 12 Dove No one's coming for you. There's no one here expect for me. Follow my voice, baby. I'm here, it's alright. 
No one's going to hurt you. His eyes softened as they searched mine for the remnant of the lost pieces of my soul. There was a crunch of gravel behind me, not the kind of continuous noise you'd get from a rolling car, but the defined short crunch of a footstep. Footsteps. The darkness pressed in on me as I fought the urge to turn around. Then there came another crunch, this time lighter and slower as if the commander of the noise was trying to be quiet, to sneak up on me perhaps. As fast as I could, I attempted to break out in a sprint before I felt a strong hand shot out and grasped onto my arm, gripping my elbow in a brutal hold. It's him. He's here. Merda Kalmati. Deep voice snarled. Baby calm down. You're going to get worked up and pass out. No don't do that. Pair of rough sinewy hands cautiously held my fingers, squeezing them tightly as an attempt to calm down my racing heart, though it did quite the opposite. Shish, you're going to hurt yourself, Dove. Breathe. Breathe with me. Shit. Calm down. Doll, I'm offended. Were you trying to run away from me? A deep familiar voice asked so gruffly that I jumped. Instinctively, I lowered my head feeling the need to diminish myself and curl into a ball, disappearing from his scrutinizing gaze. Whenever I'm talking, I want you to fucking look me in the eye. Do you understand me? I rapidly bobbed my head up and down, the intense feeling of fear overpowering any natural instinct I had, and locked me into a cage with the keys nowhere in sight. He was so brutal with his words, taking any chance he could get to include profanities. I said. Do you understand? He gritted out syllable by syllable, his fingers reaching out to take hold of my chin and held it captive between his ashen palms. I could feel my stomach roiling at the distaste of his horrid touch. Why yes. Yes. I whispered in a tight voice. What was that? I could feel the tension and the intensity in his voice. Did you fucking just get angry at me? Is that it doll? You want to disobey me, now? No no. P please just just let me go. In a spilt second, outstretched hands seized my elbow, trapping them to my sides, and pushed me roughly against the wall. Glowing bright dark blue eyes prodded into mine, burning down my barricades of protection piece by piece. You don't tell me what to do, you hear me? Before I could answer, there came the sound of a rip as they pulled the fabric of my clothes apart, stripping me bare. His dark eyes lit with lust as his hands ravaged over me. I could feel rough brutal hands unexpectedly made their way onto my lock of hair, and grabbed a fistful of it. Fingers dug into my skull, the four blackened ovals that would bruise after the blood had dried. I could hear his manly voice panting, the pressure in his breath like an animal in heat. He shut his eyes tight and snuck his nose into my hair. Oh God. Chapter 13 Dove I took a seat in the back of the class, setting my backpack on the empty seat beside me, a little hopeful that no one would occupy the seat just yet. I felt a bit uneasy venturing out of my horizons, and seizing the opportunity to become somewhat of a better writer. My eyes flickered to the whiteboard, the swift words writing fiction 101 were scribbled in a rushed manner. Oh boy. Oh boy. A slightly breathy voice spoke, snapping me out of my thought. Hey, is someone sitting here? I turned my head sideways to meet a pair of sweet and luminous dark brown eyes studying me. I couldn't help but in complete awe at how gorgeous the young woman looked. Her skin was a deep richly shade of espresso, her stare wide-eyed and firm as it held mine, lifting my gaze, drawing me in. She was tall and slender with big dark eyes and a cascade of straight midnight black hair, like pools of pure black ink sat perfectly upon her shoulders. Dressed in a high-waisted black pencil skirt that clung onto her body, revealing her curvy, almost plump shape. A white button-up short-sleeve blouse and shiny black peep-toe heels finished off her look, and popped against the deep bronze of her skin. Her ink-black hair was pinned to one side, and her lips were lacquered in a lighter shade of brown similar to her heels. Her dark eyes glanced up at me through her thick lashes, and I was literally breathless at how beautiful she was. I want to steal her eyelashes. Oh my baby Jesus. You're so beautiful. I gushed, both of my palms against my beat cheeks, still in complete awe of the beauty that stood still in front of me. Her smooth dark cheek extended into a curved smile, displaying her straight perfect pearly whites. 
Oh yeah. You can sit here if you want. You don't, you don't have to. Unless you do. She let out a rich chuckle, occupying the seat next to me. Thank you. You're beautiful as well. Nice jeans. Thank you. I beamed widely. Oh. Oh. I got them from this thrift shop, and they have really really nice jeans and bracelets, but I only buy my jeans there. I promise they're not really expensive, and you can buy more than one. They're really comfortable and snugly and, and I'm rambling again. I paused, inhaling a deep shaky breath before continuing. Sorry sorry, I can't help it, I get excited easily. It's cute. You don't have to be fucking sorry for that. The gorgeous girl winked at me, which made me giggle slightly. Presley. I'm Dove. Or, or you can call me Finny or Dove or Bambi. Well, only my brothers call me that. Well, you can call me anything you want. I said with excited smile, my feet bopping up and down, unable to contain my excitement. Oh my baby Jesus, have I just made a friend? Andre is going to be so proud of me. Yay. I quickly brought out my phone and tapped the first contact that appeared on my screen. Baby cakes. What if he doesn't care? Stop overthinking it. No more of that. Just tell him. F. Hi, how is your day going? Baby cakes, what do you want? Chapter 14 Andre She was ignoring me. I knew it. I could tell. My little Topolina was being rebellious, which could sooner or later result in a spanking. Though she wasn't ready for that yet. Fuck, I completely lost control earlier with her. I inhaled a deep breath, my dark eyes fixated on only her. Dove. It was becoming so goddamn hard to keep my focus or thoughts on anything else but the five foot one inept in front of me. Fuck that woman completely unmans me. Sugar and rainbows wrapped together in a convenient pocket-sized parcel. Topolina, I called out, my voice coming out raspier and deeper than I had intended. I never wanted to scare her with my words earlier, but perhaps I could stop the charade of being her friend. Dove. I spoke again, this time I could feel the hidden irritation beneath my voice. Why yes? Her warm gentle voice replied, like a sweet lullaby to my ears. Her voice. Fuck. My eyes flickered to where Dove was currently seated, her gaze focused on the large massive television and the cartoon that had been playing in the background for the last half hour instead of the stacks of homework on her lap, her mind was focused on something else. Wolf and Growl were joined beside her, with the exception of Wolf being a little attention seeker and attempting to crawl on her lap every five minutes. I'm going to throw him out if he doesn't get it together. Her teeth bit down on her bottom lip as she absently played with her fingers, stripping off pieces of skin from her thumb, the same habit she provoked whenever she was anxious. Do I make her anxious? Damn it, Andre. Topolina, come here, I demanded with a firm voice. I adjusted my stance on the stool, crossing my legs while I pursed my lips, thoughtfully wondering how long she could continue this charade. When she didn't budge from her position, I spoke carefully yet harshly under my breath. Now. Dove rose from the couch, and instantly the pair of Roddies started whimpering like the stupid attention seeker they were. Pussies. I'll be right back be behave. Her melodic voice spoke, and I nearly chuckled watching as she tried to muster a stern voice. Cute. I am coming, she mumbled in response, shooting me an innocent toothy grin. I couldn't help but be completely engrossed with how gorgeous she truly was. She had an ethereal sort of look that surrounded her, as though I was gazing at a piece of art. There was no carnal desire there, just a bewitching beauty. With every small step she took, my eyes stayed glued to her, my fingers folded desperately itching to reach over and have her body next to mine. She was beautiful the way fire and sunlight were beautiful, warm and glowing and golden, enough to drive a saint to madness, a ray of sunshine, a warm summer rain, a bright fire on a cold winter. When she finally reached where I sat, with the exception of apologizing to the walls, for bumping into them. I hovered over her like the dark vicious beast from the tale old as time beauty and the beast. Dove was short, minuscule, tiny. 
Blessed with the perfect body fitted for her frame, soft curves, curves that molded to her body hidden underneath her oversized shirts and pants, and I could tell she disliked, in my eyes she was perfect as she was. Chapter 15 Dove I grumbled lowly under my breath, ripping my glasses from my face, and threw them on the table. Without hesitation, the black flats I had worn to work were instantly flung to the corner of my room, utter exhaustion was finally catching up to me. Collapsing on my bed, I turned to my side rolling over a couple of times, nearly falling onto the ground before I found a comfortable position. Everything about my body felt heavy from my arms to my feet, even my derriere. Ha! What a funny word. I let my head loll from one side to the other, eyes closing one more time as I attempted to enjoy the brief darkness. Hey kid. A bellowing knock on the door jolted me awake, eyes flashing open in pure astonishment. Before I could find the words to express my anger, Darcy's gruffly deep voice spoke, ultimately silencing me. I'm leaving for the week. Blake and Riley are at work, so Charlie's coming over to keep you company. Okay, thank you Dark, I mumbled softly, a yawn on the brim of breaking through my closed throat, eventually escaping. I didn't mind Charlie coming over for the right, especially since I knew my brothers would never allow me to reside alone in the house. They were being annoyingly overbearing, almost suffocating me to the point, yet I knew it was all for my safety. They were simply petrified of losing me again. Anything happens, call me, Darcy demanded in his you have to voice, and I nodded absently, almost praying to the heavens for his departure so I could finally rest. Kid, I will. Good night. I could hear his low grumbling from the other side of the door before his harsh footsteps finally departed, and left me with the blissfully content sound of peace. No overbearing brothers, no mama. No Riley. No sound except for the light snores that lingered in the air as I relished in the silence of the room luring me to absolute drifting, my eyelashes fluttering against my cheek as my eyes slowly drifted and closed shut. By the time I awoke from my slumber, I wasn't on the bed anymore. Somehow I managed to collapse on the ground, gratefully surprised when I spotted the duvet wrapped around me like a taco blanket. I yawned softly, my closed fists traveling to my face as I attempted to rub the sleep away from my eyes and possibly get ready for the day. I rose from the ground and stretched my back, the sound of the cracking made me giggle slightly to myself. Be serious, Dove. I made my way through the room trying my absolute best to avoid a few of the walls, given the bruises that had formed over my forehead. Stupid walls. My eyes flickered over my phone, and the several missed calls and text messages I had received over the span of the night. Okay fine. Only Charlie texted me. And Andre, ack? I'm famous, talk to the hand. My lips pursed thoughtfully instinctively scrunching up my nose as I read over Charlie's text message. See, I left early this morning. Make yourself breakfast. Payson will take you to school. My mouth immediately went dry at her text message, my expression stretched into a mask of terror. Payson? He's taking me to school. My heart started pounding at increasingly rapid pace, a slight discomfort deep inside my heart, and I felt the urge to run, hide, escape anything to get away from what my brain had perceived to be a threat. Danger. Even with my attempt to calm myself down trying to visualize my serenity, the panic I was feeling grew stronger inside, as my mental faculties began to give way to my emotions. Chapter 16 Dove Sita T. Smetila, Beast gruffly commanded in a firm voice to the pair of frenzied Roddies who wouldn't stop whining, and whimpering in a low voice that absolutely broke my heart into a million wrecked pieces. Almost like they could sense my inner turmoil, the pair of large fiercely dogs instantly waddled over to my side tackling my face with peppering, slobbering kisses as I rested my head on the couch. Sit down. Stop that. Wolf jumped and sat himself on my lap, his large furred body collapsing against my small frame, head placed on my shoulder giving me a hug. I couldn't help but smile as Growl came beside me and stood defensively, panting with his tongue out. I'm o okay, relax, I reassured Growl gazing into his deep almond eyes, 
the saddened expression on his face as he placed his paws on my knee, protectively glancing over Wolf, made my heart flutter with happiness. Wolf nudged my neck several times with his nose, drawing my attention to the reddish, blotched bruise that had started to form. It's just a scratch, promise. I'm a fine. See. The pair of Roddies let out low whimpers coaxing me with pure gentleness. Beast chuckled deeply, his wide shoulders rumbling from the action as he watched the overprotective soft pair of dog huddle over me like I was a prized piece of bone. Whoa easy there. Careful with her, Beast reprimanded when the pair of Roddies growled lowly as he approached where I sat on the couch. I attempted to muster a stern glare towards the Roddies, instantly failing and instead placing a kiss on their forehead smiling. Andre should be arriving soon. I'll be in the kitchen fixing up something if you're hungry or not. Anything you need, just let me know, Cupcake. Beast told me with a gentle smile, his eyes shining with amusement. Don't hesitate, okay? Shyly, I nodded, mumbling a soft okay. Before Beast could even move a few feet away from the living room, the loud harsh of the door jolted me upright, my heart racing at the thought of Andre home. My assumptions were confirmed when the pair of large, massive dogs jumped from the couch, ecstatically barking as they approached the figure behind. Figures I rose from my seat, my eyes flickered through each corner of the room awaiting a certain pair of dark amber eyes, instantly surprised when he appeared almost like we were running into each other for the very first time. In that very same bar where he threatened to shoot my brain out if I didn't shut up. His walk his stare as poisonous as the air after a nuclear bomb. Andre was perfectly fitted to shame others in an impeccably crisp dark suit, and I mentally noted the fact that he had removed his suit and tie, unbuttoned the top two buttons of his white shirt, and folded back his shirt sleeve to reveal his extremely masculine tatted forearms lightly dusted with hair and raised veins. His eyes were as dark as I remembered, dark, bright fire-lit eyes that melted in mine, pupils flecked with gold-like beach pebbles. They glowed like ember, a depth in Andre amber eyes that was impossible to find in any other eyes, and the way he looked at me as he approached made me feel like there was something worthwhile in the brown of my eyes too. Chapter 17 Andre I despised the smell of blood. It was quite ironic, for someone who spent most of their time lifetime around the metallic, deteriorating smell of blood, I was starting to build a tolerance to it. Why? I didn't know. All I knew was the fact that I hated the petrifying smell of blood, it didn't mean I couldn't stand the sight. Oh, I could stand more than the sight of blood. My eyes flickered towards the phone in my hand, my firm gaze running over the words Dove had last texted me. F. P. S. 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 T. 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 Baby cakes, do you want some brownies? My eyebrows arched in amusement, and just as I was about to respond to it, an harsh, insufficient cough halted my motion, and instantly captured my attention. For fuck's sake. My demanding gaze found a pair of dull blue eyes, eyes sharp like those of Mount Everest. Eyes that locked on mine wide-eyed gaze and shrewd his nostrils flared with shock. Shock, pure shock flashed across his features at whatever he saw on my face and he stumbled back a step. Actually stumbled. I let out an irritated sigh, before returning back to what I had been occupied to. Dove. Oh, what are you up to? Topolina, if, if I give you a hundred dove hugs and brownies, can I PWESE drive winking face? Oh, and kisses? You've got yourself a deal. Excuse me, his deep familiar voice spoke with the slightest irritability. Why the fuck am I here? You do know that I can sue your ass, you and everyone who was involved in my kidnapping. As I was about to respond to his very very threatening words, my phone dinged notifying me of Dove's important text. He can wait. T, um um um, can I drive the fast black car? A loud thrash in front of me held my gaze captive, my lips pursed thoughtfully as I finally regarded the man seated in front of me. Why the hell am I here? Answer me. I demand answers. Payson, I whispered lowly yet harshly unbuttoning the first set of buttons on my well-ironed shirt, placing my elbow against the chair as I watched him. A thin paper cigarette hung from my lips as I lit fire into it, taking a long drag of smoke every minute or so. The thick white smoke shifted, swirling as they danced their way into the ceiling. 
Dove would be disappointed. I was very well capable of controlling my temper, I had been taught about the art of control from a young age, yet the simple thought of a five feet inept could disarm the inner bomb inside of me. You don't demand anything. Do you understand? You don't scare me, he taunted, sharp blue eyes that stared deep into mine with the idiotically confidence of a teenager. How fun. I let out an irritated sigh and crossed my legs. I don't need to scare you. That's not my goal. I'm here to talk to you so let's talk, yes? Payson let out a short, humorless laugh, his shoulders rumbling from the action, as my firm gaze fixated on the terrorized expression on his face, an expression he managed to cover with the wittiest confidence he could muster. You want to talk about Ambi? Chapter 18 Dove McDonald's is a, a gourmet restaurant. I argued, huffing out my chest as I crossed my arms in mere defiance. T their barbecue sauce is really really good, and that and their chicken nuggets are the best you know. I mean, they can be a bit unhealthy but let me be unhealthy in peace. A tatted thumb caressed my chin gently, releasing the slight pout I had mustered. Baby, let me take you out properly, not McDonald's, yes? B but what's what's wrong with McDonald's, I'm loving it. Andre chuckled lowly, both sides of his cheek curving into a delicious, mesmerizing dimpled smile that managed to lead my head astray and flooded me with heart-flustering butterflies. Whoa. Instinctively, I reached out poking his cheeks slightly as I let out a light giggle. He so toot. Drool worthy. After we had left Silas's bakery, Andre granted me the privilege of driving his beautiful, pristine car on the way to visit Raven. Although I did indeed hit the curb about a million times over, I received a bunch of grumbling and grunting from Andre, which clearly meant that I was doing tremendously better than the other time. Though the grumpy man made me pull the car to the side of the road again, I never hit any unprotected car. Goal completed. We were starving so Andre decided to let me pick out the restaurant and I chose McDonald's because it was clearly the right choice yet he refused, threw a fit. And now we were arguing in the drive THR of McDonald's about the food options while I was mustering the famous pleading look on Andre. Please fall for it. Please fall for it. I am not in the mood to socialize today. Sorry people. Sorry big man upstairs. Hi. Welcome to McDonald's. May I take your order? The automated voice message responded, which made me jump slightly in my seat, letting out a shrill, and Andre laughed even harder, his wide muscular shoulders rumbling from the foreign action as he rested his head against the side of my neck. The sound of his deep earthquaking laughter was like an soul elevator for anyone blessed enough to hear it. The tendered expression, filled with unrestrained twinkle, made me completely dissolve to absolute puddles of softness. The gorgeous, twinkling expression in his eyes when he laughed made me forget what we were arguing about in the first place. Grr. Oh my god. The loud, shrill voice on the speaker exclaimed, drawing my attention to the menu. Are you guys going to sit there and talk or fucking order something? Oh. Okay. How very rude. Instantly my eyes found Andre, the golden in his eyes darkening into deep amber as he watched my shocked expression. His beautiful full lips curled in contempt, tatted fingers absently brushed across his lower lips and I knew what that meant. Andre was like a silent yet deadly storm, which could consume everything entirely within its close proximity. Like storm that came out of nowhere, it could either end in a downpour of rain, lightning or thunder. Or the unexpected. Andre was pure lightning made flesh. Colder than falling snow. Unstoppable as the desert sands riding the wind. Chapter 19 Dove We were parked in front of my driveway, sitting in the back of Andre jet black Mercedes, and I remained hesitant as ever to enter. I had just spent nearly the whole day with Andre watching Tangled, fighting with Beast about whether apple juice or orange juice was better, and I won. Obviously apple juice, and cuddling with wolf and growl. Mostly cuddling with wolf and growl. I glanced at the golden watch perched upon the dashboard read 1120, and the thrill of having another half hour with Andre made me smile myself to myself. Stay still please, 
I asked in a gentle voice as I finished braiding his hair into two majestic French braid, the long braid of dark hair falling down in pair of braids to his shoulders. A single curl of the purest black ink fell against his eyes, nearly blinding his gaze, and yet I had never laid my eyes upon someone as beautiful as him. His midnight dark hair, glinting in the moonlight streaming in through the window, drew my attention to his lit golden eyes that regarded me. A all done. You look like a, a cutie, don't you think? It's beautiful, Topolina. Thank you, Andre said, strong protective arms like manacles wrapped around my waist, effortlessly caging my small frame against him. His piercing amber eyes blazed with a primal desire as they melted in my brown wide-eyed gaze, and I nearly shuddered against a simple glance of his eyes. Andre made me feel attractive. The way he gazed at me. The way he always talked to me. I wasn't sure if anyone had ever made me feel as beautiful as he made me feel when he looked at me. Like it was taking almost every muscle in him, everything, to keep his mouth away from mine. Strings of intrusive negative thoughts weaved into my mind, and all I could think about was Charlie. Did he think Charlie was more beautiful than me? Does he want her instead? What if he wanted to be in a relationship with her? What? He pressed the softness of his perfectly plump lips against the curve of my crooked nose, although it was imperfect and less than par, the secret message of tenderness nearly brought tears to my eyes. Stop overthinking him. Che succeed Nella tua bella testa. The confident golden tone of his amber eyes glowed liquid like the smooth scotch whiskey, becoming light warm and shone in the moonlight. Talk to me please. What's going on in that pretty head of yours? And nothing, I'm peachy. Nothing, nothing's wrong. How are you? Dove, his deep gravelly voice spoke and effortlessly silenced me. Andre directed a sharp look admonishing the lies that pooled out of my lips, and I couldn't help but visibly shrink in his dark gaze, my small fingers absently rolling the rings on his finger. He never calls me Dove. You don't have to tell me, but I don't appreciate lies, see? I bit down on my bottom lip, shaking my head slightly in response. And no. Good. Do you know what happens when people lie to me, baby? His dark, deep gaze scrutinized me, his harsh breath lingering heavily into the humid air. My cheeks flushed beet red, tangled yards of disoriented thoughts washed over me as I thought about his vague words. Chapter 20 Dove Pee Papa my shell of a cracked voice resonated in the dark-lit voice as my trembling pruned fingers pounding absently against the doorframe, a desperate attempt as to conquering the walls of barricades that stood before my father and I, Papa. Pee Papa pee please, please Papa. I'll be. I'll be good, I promise. I let out a low whimper as my legs collapsed beneath me, all precious hope I had once kept had dispersed into nothingness. Please please. I it's dark Papa. I. I'm scared. I'll be good, good, really, really good. My small frame slid down the door, my back pressed firmly against the doorframe as I brought my knees to my chest. Almost like I couldn't control my tears, heart wrecking sobs spilling over open salted wounds forced their way out of my chest, my chest shaking in an odd trembling rhythm. I hated the dark. I hated the room. It was his. Evelyn. Have you learned your lesson, little one? His deep, rather toneless voice questioned, and delicate hair started to tinge along the back of my neck, almost like it was my body's natural response to the commanding voice of my father. Or should I grant Saws the pleasure of reteaching you simple manners, yes? Deeply eloquent pair of blue eyes flashed through my mind, prodding through the barricades of control I had learned to take back possession of. Eyes that could take worlds apart and remake them with a single glance of their glowing dark depths. Deep piercing blue eyes like Mount Everest, the tiny specks of indigo consumed my timid gaze, almost drowning in their depths and it wouldn't be the worst way to go. Dove. Answer when I am speaking to you. His crushingly powerful voice spoke and my limbs went numb with absolute fear, drowning in a sea of my guilt-ridden fear as I stared wide-eyed into space. Papa had never laid a hand on me. Ever. Yet that didn't mean he didn't find other ways to teach me a simple lesson. One. Two. When I get to three, I expect you to answer my question. Shall I fetch saws? 
he demanded through gritted teeth, his vague words washed over like loose and powdery sand. Saz. No. 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 I shook my head adamantly, even though he couldn't see me, the feeling of dread crept from the shadows and overtook my natural ability to respond. The simple whisper of his name terrorized me, leaving me with the beast of fear holding my entire being captive. No, no, Papa. I am sorry. I'm so as sorry, please, please. I can't. I can't be in here, Papa. I, it's dark, it's so, so dark. P, please, please let me out. I'll be good. I sobbed lowly, my fingers clung onto the door handle jiggling the knob as if it would break free in my firm hold. Um, will you? The quiet clicks of his precise footsteps overwhelmed my ears, and I could hear the slow, dragging beat of my heart as the footsteps quickened, getting closer, and closer till they stilled in front of the room. One night. Saz will let you out in the morning. Behave, little one. Papa. Pee Papa. No please. I couldn't think, I couldn't breathe as my chest constricted. I subtly felt the pulse in my neck and wrists, and began to feel it pounding in my head. I clenched and opened my fists slowly, trying to keep them still, but I couldn't. Chapter 21 Dove Andre had been texting my phone all night and yet I couldn't respond, not even with a single word. I glanced at the clock perched on my dresser that read 4.30 am, then my sleepy gaze flickered to the phone in my hand reading over the words on the screen. Messages Groups of messages and missed calls Although it wasn't technically missed calls since I had seen them, but I didn't take not one ounce of action. I couldn't. I remained torn between the facade of being Mama's perfect daughter, then listening to the voice of my favorite person. B. Topolina, are you asleep? B. I'm worried. I haven't heard your voice all day. B. Call me. B. Don't test me, little girl. B. Dove. My heart clenched from his words, instantly feeling regret about the decision I had chosen. Mama. I inhaled a deep breath, my lips quivering at his recent message before I turned my phone off and hid it beneath my pillow. Shutting my eyes closed, I desperately attempted to remember the soft, cradling embrace of his firmly protective arms as they held my body against his, and unconsciously I breathed in his intoxicating scent, feeling just a tiny bit alive from the memories in my mind. I had never felt more alone, yet emptiness crept into my heart and cultivated a home in the darkness of my soul. Just a little bit longer, and then I can talk to him again. At least I had hoped. I spent the next few days in pure anguish, every single second of the day, I wished to simply send Andre a text and explain everything, the whole situation about Mama, but I knew I couldn't like him. I couldn't even befriend him. I couldn't know him. I had to forget everything about him, in order to make Mama proud. Even if it made me want to burn with the hottest flames of hell, even if it agonized me to ignore his hundreds of text messages. I had to do it. I had to. He doesn't even like like me. You're not rambling today. What's gotten into you, kid? Darcy's low voice asked from across the dining table, and I instantly shook my head keeping my eyes fixated on the stray fabric of my dark jeans. Seems like something is wrong. Stop lying and spit it out. What's going on? I I nothing, I said adamantly shaking my head once again, and yet I knew Darcy wouldn't drop the matters. He was like a man on a mission, and he would drag the truth out of me no matter the tactic or the challenge. Darcy huffed a low sigh, then I felt the slight tap of his feet from underneath the table. My head instantly snapped upward, staring into his softened dark eyes before he rolled his gorgeous blue eyes. I don't. I don't usually do this. Fuck this is hard. Talking to people is so damn stupid, he groaned lowly flicking a stray piece of brown curl from his gaze. Talk talk to me. I'm here to, to listen. Darcy asked with a raise of his brow, almost tasting the foreign words on the tip of his tongue. Chapter 20 Dove The low hushed sound of gravelly male voices woke me up, and I slowly began to open my eyes with a soft sigh. The sight of my small cozy room filled my eyes and memories of last night rushed into my head and consumed my mind. 
A single thought overwhelmed my senses. Andre. Instinctively, my fingers searched the bed as an attempt to find him, my sleepy gaze flickering over my room, bouncing from the deep purple color of my walls to the two furry monkeys sitting on the side of my bed with an imprinted goofy smile. Mr. and Mrs. Snuggles. I nearly jumped as the sound of the door creaking alerted me to the possibility of an intruder, yet when I turned my head, I had realized it had only been Andre. He didn't leave me. He stayed. Yay. I gazed at him, the sultry sweet smell of his natural cologne lingered in the air, and I couldn't help but inhale his deep scent as it coaxed my nostrils. He had just showered given by the sight of his midnight dark curls, even curlier than usual, cascading down his back, and it sat perfectly upon his shoulders, complementing the intricate calligraphy elegantly illustrated upon his sun-kissed skin. He wasn't wearing the same clothes from last night but had completely changed into a dark t-shirt that gripped his body tightly to reveal the roped muscles of his bulging shoulders and chest as he threaded a hand through his hair. The dark jeans fitted around him, low on his lean hips and muscular thick thighs, outlining his lean torso and narrow hips printed with bulging veins that traveled all the way to his muscular pair of hands. A dangling golden chain fell from his t-shirt as he leaned over to gather his computer where it sat on the chair. H hi daddy, um good morning, I whispered softly as I played with the skin of my thumb in anticipation of his words. Was he still angry with me? Or maybe he finally changed his mind and decided that he didn't want to be with me anymore. Or maybe he wanted another person. A woman like Charlie. Stop being so negative, Finny. Um hum, he hummed with a gentler tone than usual, his firm gaze fixated on the content of the laptop and completely disregarded my presence. Your parents have left and so have your brothers. They didn't see me so no worrying, Andre told me his slender fingers absently tracing his bottom lip as he was deep in thought about something. Regardless I nodded in response to his words. I didn't understand how Andre would have managed to dodge the presence of my overprotective brothers, especially since Bellamy often entered my room at 7.30 sharp, but I didn't need to know, all I wanted was for Andre to stop being angry angry at me. It sucks. I quickly jumped into the shower, spending an extra amount of time than I would usually do. Even through the strong barricades of the dripping sound of the shower, I could still decipher traces of conversation in the other room, a conversation Andre was having with. Cosimo. Chapter 23. Dove. I slipped on a pair of pink sunglasses sitting it on the bridge of my freckled nose, before I slowly turned around to admire my reflection in the mirror. For once in my life I didn't feel the need for the comfort of my beloved sweater, I felt confident. Even if it was for a tiny moment, I felt at ease with my clothes. My fingers awkwardly played with the buttons of my white, ruffled crop shirt, tugging at the fabric as an attempt to cover up my stomach. I gazed down at the high-waisted plaid skirt and simple black converse with my white socks. At the arc of each step, the skirt would rise to expose a few inches of my taut thighs. I couldn't help but tug at the skirt slightly, feeling a bit anxious about how I looked. Stop worrying. No one's going to see you, except for Andre. Breathe, just relax. Breathe, Topolina. Threading my fingers through my wild, massive curls I had somehow managed to tame, dark, glossy curls cascading down my back in loose ringlets and rested perfectly upon my shoulders. My favorite strawberry scrunchie was on my wrist, adding a bit of uniqueness to my outfit and I was strangely sure Andre would be in possession of my cherry scrunchie. Strangely. Before I could attempt to doubt myself, the ding from my phone notified me of a text message. My curious gaze flickered over the phone wrapped in my hand, knowingly conscious of that fact that only one person could be texting me this morning. B. Outside. F. A C K K K K K S J E N S N X N C H your 10 minutes early. Give me five minuses, I am on my way less than three. Quickly I rushed, almost tripping over the mountain pile of clothes on the ground before I attempted to catch myself, but it had been too late. I landed on the ground with a loud thud, my derriere making unfortunate contact with the carpet, and a low moan of displeasure escaped my lips. Then I spent about five minutes punching the air as an effort to redeem myself from the slight embarrassment. 
Bolting down the stairs, I grabbed hold of my dark-rimmed glasses from the living room table, completely fixated on the idea that Andre was standing outside my house. Hushed male voices snapped me out of my daydream, and I slowly waddled to the kitchen instantly, feeling pair of brown eyes singled on my existence. Another familiar pair of dark blue eyes softened drastically as I approached the row of male figures. My older brothers. My brows furrowed, curious gaze traveled over to the black notebook firmly glued in Darcy's hands. Evelyn's journal. I inhaled sharply as forceful strings of memories tumbled out of their locks and instantly flooded my mind. Hey little one. Warm pair of hands gently ruffled my hair, drawing my attention to the tall, slender man behind me. Riley. Glancing upward, titling my chin just enough to be able to meet his warm eyes, he shot me a lopsided smile that was just enough to ease past tensions. I smiled softly at him, thanking Riley, as he placed a plate of salivating waffles in front of me, yet I couldn't even look at the food. I couldn't stand the sight of anything. Chapter 24 Dove Hi. Sil. I greeted in a gentle voice as he sauntered into the kitchen. A low gasp escaped me, my eyes fixated on the spreading purple grotesque bruises with yellow blotches that covered his upper jaw, and I knew they would only deepen over the coming week. Are you you okay? I gestured to his jaw for implausible explanation, yet he disregarded my entire presence. The pair of large ferocious dogs waddled behind him, excited loud barks erupted as soon as their pair of almond brown eyes landed on me, almost a sign of recognition. Wolf wagged his tail excitedly and let out two loud barks as he came over planting his butt on my lap, and I giggled, my fingers sinking over his soft fur giving him a chest rub. Growl sat beside the stool where I was seated, and I gestured my hand out for him to lick, a doggish smile danced across his lips. Noticing that Silvio hadn't responded to my greeting, I tried once more, yet it only proved useless. Maybe he didn't hear me, it's okay. I'm fine. Wolf and Growl switched positions on my lap, and I gave Growl his personal share of chest rubs, nuzzling against his soft fur as he imprinted my face with wet sloppy kisses. Almost immediately, Silvio barked out commands in Italian, and the pair of dogs whimpered lowly, waddling towards the stairs. I thanked Silvio, as he slid a plate of salivating, mouth-watering mountain of pancakes in front of me. I um, I can't finish this. Dee, do you want some? I asked, trying my absolute best not to stutter in front of him. Silvio absolutely hated my stuttering, and I only wanted for him to like me, especially since I didn't have lots of friends. I'm sure he needs a friend as well. Everyone needs a friend. His dark set of olive green eyes singled me out, effortlessly making me feel like fleeing, hiding. Anything to get away from the malicious expression on his face. Eat the fucking food and stop talking, Silvio commanded through gritted teeth. My lower lips trembled at such brutal tone, yet I could only smile through my teary eyes, desperately trying to look brave. Hurt people hurt people. Can, could you please sit with me? I mumbled glancing down at the plate of pancakes and slowly slid a forkful into my mouth. Yum. Please? I. I know you don't really like me but I, I can't, I don't like to eat alone, I get, get, I'm scared. He squirmed uncomfortably, tugging firmly at his pair of black gloves. Silently he occupied an empty seat across from me, bulging veined arms crossed against his chest as he watched me intently. A deep-rooted frown settled on his lips as he gazed at me with expressionless olive-green eyes. I have orders to be with you at all times. Eat and stop looking at me. I nodded mumbling a soft thank you, and yet Silvio didn't say anything in response, his expressionless olive eyes continued watching me, and the thick rotting silence between us engulfed me. I tried my absolute best to finish the mountain of pancakes, but I only got through half of the platter, Peering at Silvio who remained absolutely silent, his olive green eyes hidden in the inky paper of the book he held. I never knew Silvio loved to read, but the sound of flipped pages each minute had proved me wrong. My eyes flickered from the sight of book cover to the jagged scar that ran down his chiseled jaw. Non smetti my defis army? He murmured harshly under his breath, but my ears caught the statement and instantly translated the meaning. Pieces of phrases I had heard multiple times, often from Andre.
Chapter 25 Andre Fear was something I had felt once in my lifetime. The first time was when I was 18, forced into the closet by Gia, my stepmother, truly a devil in disguise. Yet ever since the little inept stumbled into my life, the first time I had ran into her in the men's bathroom, threatening to blow out her brains if she didn't shut up, fear had became something constant in my life. Fear of tainting her pure soul with my greedy hands, the fear of losing her to my past, the fear of her protection each day. The fear to love despite Gia's pools of deceiving lies. Emiliano, my blood father, he would often tell me, Piccolo, fear is the greatest threat to success. Yet my greatest fear was losing Dove. My Topolina. As a Genovese, the heir to the Genovese crime family, and bounded to the duty of the crime lord, I wasn't entitled to the meaning of love. I didn't need love yet the simple thought of doves slipping through my hands like quicksand were misery, heart-wrecking, and I would be damned if I allowed anything to happen to her. Anything or anyone. Not even the little boy standing a few feet away from us. My dark eyes flickered from the boy examining every aspect of his facial features, and given by the look of shock on Dove's face, I could have suspected she knew him. A past lover perhaps? Fuck no. Baby? I whispered in the softest voice I could manage as I itched a few inches toward her, gently placing my hands on her waist as an attempt to draw her attention, yet she jumped. Almost like she was repulsed by my slight touch. Hello doll. His gruffly voice spoke, the deep smirk curved into his lips almost like he had achieved a single goal. Before I could even begin to process anything, the sound of low whimpering resonated through me and broke my non-existent heart into shattered pieces. Dove. My eyes instantly flew to the small girl hunched over, her pair of trembling arms around her knees as she rocked back and forth, a definite sign of panic. I jumped towards her and so did the little boy, bending down slightly as to examine her big brown eyes filled with tears. Doll? Don't fucking touch her, I growled at the little boy, before pulling Dove towards my body in a possessive hold. His dark blue eyes widened for a fraction before he raised his hands up in surrender, and slowly stepped back from her. I glanced down at the trembling girl in my arms, my massive hands gently gripping onto the backside of her thighs, and hefted her against my warm body, wrapping her legs around my waist to steady her. Immediately, I started heading for the doors despite the strange looks of people walking by. I could fucking care less. All that mattered was my little Topolina. Always. I breathed a sigh of relief when I spotted the black sleek Audi parked in front of the building, a pair of bright blue eyes widening with concern as they spotted the small girl in my embrace. Cupcake? Beast held the car door, opening it slightly, as I entered the passenger seat without hesitation. His lips pursed thoughtfully like he wanted to ask something, yet decided against it. Brown hair blue eyes white shirt leather jacket. Find him. Non tornair finche non lo avrai. I commanded in a deep authoritative voice that absolutely left no room for discussion. Aura. Beast nodded firmly, his fingers brushing past his holster, and I didn't spare him a glance before he had disappeared from my sight. Chapter 26 Dove. And oh, she's still coming to terms with seeing Saws. She's been asking for you, so we haven't said anything yet. You should be the one to explain everything to her. A low, gruffly voice spoke softly, and I registered the sound of heavy footsteps ascending onto the stairs. Low, masculine voice crashing and colliding over each other washed over the room, and I caught a husky, deep voice that I knew without a doubt belonged to Andre. Even from the comfort of my room, his guttural, rough growl shook through the room, effortlessly snapping my disoriented mind out of the hazy cloud it had been surrounded by. All of a sudden, all I wanted was him. Andre. All I wanted was for his strong masculine arms to wrap around me, and promise that everything would be fine even if nothing was absolutely fine. Especially with the introduction of Saws. I sighed lowly bringing my knees up to my chest as I slowly started to convince myself that Saws would never hurt me again, he could never. I'm stronger now right? Or at least I hoped. Topolina? The sound of quiet knocking against the doorframe alerted me, and I jumped slightly in response. Open the door, baby. It's me. It's just me, 
Andre roughly deep voice commanded, my body shivering with thrilling excitement that he was finally here. The any key, he demanded in a serious tone when I opened the door slightly, granting him entrance to my dark room. Come here. Without hesitation I jumped into his big comforting arms, my small frame molding to his, and I shut my eyes melting into his warm embrace. He bent down slightly, his lips nestling against the side of my hair as he pressed a soft kiss to my temple. Sugars. The simple action of him pulling my body against his was strangely satisfying, like a puzzle piece snapping neatly into place. I whimpered lowly, my small hands automatically clutching at his shirt desperately hoping he wouldn't disappear into thin air, giving myself the assurance that he was indeed real. His intoxicating faint cologne enveloped me in a tightly bare hug, my legs wrapped around his waist as he slowly lowered us to the bed. Baby he spoke gently, his voice from concern to reassurance. I laid on top of him, his big muscled body engulfing my frame. His large calloused hands lifted to my back, rubbing in an upward-downward motion as an attempt to calm my trembling body down, the same way he always did whenever I was having a panic attack. The thought of that brought tears to my eyes and I sniffed, burying my tear-filled face into the crook of his neck. Aye aye. Aye he saws he's back and, and what, what if comes for me and, and you get hurt? Aye, he. I can't, you'll get hurt be because of em me and, and then you're g going to hate me, but I don't want, want you to hate me, I cried out, unable to resist the sobs that escaped my lips, and Andre merely hugged me tighter against his body, stroking my hair while tears coursed down my cheeks and stained his neck. I am so sorry I. I'm so, so sorry. Chapter 27 Dove Hey champ, I know we're the last person you want to hear from right now but I just need to know you're safe. Please. Kid, where the hell are you? You can't just leave and not say a thing. Everyone's fucking worried. Hell I'm worried. What the f frick? Just let us know where you are, okay? Please. Hey babe it's Presley. I'm on my way, I'll be there as fast as I can. Baby, it's mama. Where are you? What's this about you disappearing? Did something happen? Does this have to do with that boy? Come home and we'll talk about it please. Your brothers are freaking out, and Riley can't even look me in the eye. Please come home. Hey Finny. It's Riley. It's dad. Bambi. I'm sorry, I'm sorry I got scared and all I wanted was to protect you. Baby please let us explain everything properly, come home. Please. Please come home. I love you, we love you. Please come home. Hey it's Charlie. Everyone's worried about you. Stop causing trouble and just come home. Hi Finny, it's Bryn. I, it's been two months. Two fucking months. Darcy says you're safe and you're doing good and I trust him but, but fuck, I miss my little sister. I miss our fights and your laugh. If you ever decide to come back home, we'll be here waiting with open arms. Happy birthday Finny. Happy birthday to the kindest and sweetest girl I know. Happy birthday champ. I love you. Hi Bambi. It's our dad. Happy birthday sweetheart. Remember when I said we would adopt Raven on your birthday, well, she's yours now. I hope you're listening to this, knowing how sorry I am for everything. All I wanted was to protect you. Happy birthday. It's Aubrey. Happy birthday Finny. God, I can't believe you're 21. I, we miss you. I'm sorry. Come home soon. Happy birthday Topolina. I'm joking. Happy birthday Cupcake. I know I'm probably the second last person you want to hear a stupid voicemail from right now, but I sincerely wish you a happy birthday. Wolf and Growl miss you, and so do we. Happy birthday. Topolina, deep magnetic voice spoke into the phone, effortlessly capturing my attention. If you're listening to this now, I hope I'm the one who you're spending this special day with. Happy birthday, to my little baby. The most perfect and gorgeous baby ever. Say tuto per me. Everything. All I want is for you to be happy, even if that isn't with me. You're everything to me. Absolute silence filled the phone for a silent heartbeat, 
the sound of his roughly dulcet breathing like he was holding himself from saying something else. Look inside Mr. Snuggles' heart, there's a little surprise, hum? Happy birthday, Topolina. My clammy fingers gripped the phone, silent tears raced down my cheeks, unable to hold in my heartbreak any longer. My throat tightened as gut-wrenching sobs overtook my chest and forced their way out. Grasping onto the pillow, I covered my teary face with trembling shaky hands as tears botched down my face dripping between my fingers and rained down on my shirt, every every single memories of us together flooded through my mind and terrorized my soul. Chapter 28 Andre I wanted to fuck every inch of her into Oblivion. In my bed, in my shower, in my living room. In the kitchen. All of the fucking above. Everywhere and anywhere. That was how heated Dove Van Doren made me. Reaching down, I tugged the tight fabric of the pants I had already leaked a little cum into, unashamedly displaying my frustration yet desire for the little vixen at the same time. Ever since she called me daddy again, she had been taunting me, almost begging for me to do something in front of her friend. A sexy innocent angel that was sent to bait a man's will and she had definitely captured mine in those big brown eyes of hers. Grasping the martini in my clammy hands, I fought the urge to throw her onto my shoulders and simply run out of the club with her little ass. I was a little amused to see what her reaction would be, but I knew not to test my luck any further. Dove hated me, and I couldn't blame her. I got scared and fucked everything up, like I always did. It didn't matter anymore. None of that did because I was back for my girl. Come hell or high water, she was fucking mine. And I would be damned if I allowed her to slip through my hands again for the third time. Two months without her pretty smile was hell, I couldn't imagine a lifetime. Hell, I didn't want to. You're such a fucking loser, you know that? Dove's friend spoke in a low, threatening voice as she slid into the stool next to me. Wonderful. Another person that despised me. Do you know that she cried herself till she passed out every single night after you left? Every single night. And then she would send you voicemails, even though she knew you would never receive them. I received them. God I listened to them. She didn't want to live anymore after you left, and now that a piece of her is finally beginning to show, you're back. Why? I? My mouth went absolutely dry at her question. It was a simple question. Why? Why was I back for Dove? Why did I need to see that pretty smile of hers? Why did I spend every single minute watching her, ensuring that she was safe after we broke up? Why did I trail her the night when Presley picked her up? Why did I come back? Presley let out a low snort, shaking her head to herself like she was utterly disappointed in me. Well get in line woman. Do you even love her? Do you care about her? Her actual happiness? Because if you did, you wouldn't have broken her heart, you wouldn't have said all of those hurtful words and you wouldn't have shown up here. You're her best friend. I respect that, I do but you know nothing. Absolutely nothing. The word love isn't something that is easily said for me, and I may not know much about that word, but I do care for her Presley. I affirmed with a firm nod. My eyes flickered through the club as I searched for her on the dance floor, a small smile tugging at the edge of my lips as she spun around playfully, entrancing every man and woman. God I care about her so much, and you're right. I am selfish. I'm selfish for even wanting her, but I can't go back and change the past. If she wants me to beg I'll fucking beg, if she wants me to crawl, I'll crawl. I'll do anything, I'll spend every single moment of my life trying to prove how sorry I am. Trying to earn back her trust. My teeth dug into my lower lip as her brown eyes melted into my gaze. I'll do anything to prove I'm worthy of her. Anything. Her dark eyes widened with shock, her jaw slacked lowly. Well for someone that doesn't know much about the word love, it sounds like you love her. I don't know how Finny feels but you better beg for her forgiveness because you were a asshole. That's exactly what I'm planning to do. I had broken her heart multiple times and every time there was one thing constant. Running. Every time I found myself getting closer with Dove, a foreign feeling always gripped and terrorized my soul, 
almost like it was too perfect to be real, and I was grasping at straws to ruin the foundation of our trust. Coward. That was the fucking word to explain what I was. It was the same reason I pushed Dove away every single time, the fact that I was a coward who couldn't properly face his feelings and allow myself to love, care, cherish her. Fuck, I never deserved her, and I definitely didn't deserve her trust. My dark gaze traveled to the dance floor where the woman who had managed to capture my heart stood, her flushed cheeks darkening under the blinding lights as a figure stood behind her back. His greedy disgustingly hands planted on her waist, swaying his hips in a slow sensual manner. Within seconds I had flew from my seat, my tall muscular frame shoving into the middle of their bodies, interrupting whatever the fuck had been going on. My long tatted fingers curled around my gun, tracing over the cold metal peeking out of my dark pants, a testament to how fucking crazy this little angel drove me. Hell, I couldn't remember the last time I had ever felt this possessive over a woman, never. Indie tro. Aura, I commanded in a deep gruffly voice, titling my chin upward as to examine the little boy who stood in front of me. Immediately, his hands dropped to his side, a look of recognition flashing across his features. He indeed knew who I was. After all, who wouldn't? The Gevinese crime family owned majority of the properties in New York, and this particular nightclub. Step back. Now. Don. The young man gulped, his head anatomically bent in respect. Pussy. Non sapivo che fossi tornado. I didn't know you had returned. I never left. My voice was thick, roughly with a hint of the flourishing accent that flooded my speech. She's mine. Off limits, Romeo. I don't think I have to remind you that I don't like to share, hmm? He nodded firmly with a shake of his head, his fingers trembling slightly before I sauntered away from the dance floor, my gaze flickering from the crowd to the stage in search of Dove. It seemed like everyone had just parted away from me, dark eyes fixated on the sight of the tall, tattooed man as I walked by. I never considered myself to be unnerving until I met Dove, wanting to do everything possible in my power not to scare her away. I would often practice smiling in the mirror, trying to learn how to converse like a normal human being. I wasn't a short man by any means, well over six foot six with arms ripped with tattoos, and dark eyes that would usually attract women and surrendered guys running for the fields. And Dove, fuck she was the very opposite. A prim, proper angel that searched for the best in everyone including me. Perhaps that was why her brothers was opposed to the idea of our relationship. Dove was young, barely into her twenties, barely legal enough to drink, and as far as they were concerned, their little sister was too young for me. I didn't consider ten years of an age gap to be terrible, considering the fact that I knew other couples with much larger age gap. I didn't give a fuck anymore, I didn't give a fuck about the fact that she should be dating a man a few years older than her, I didn't give a fucking damn. She was mine. Mine in every way. As I shook myself out of my thoughts, a strangely familiar sweet voice filled the speakers. Hi. Hello. My my name is Dove but I go by Finney or Dove. Tell us how old you are Finney. A masculine voice called out, and my head instantly craned to the direction of the voice, mustering the deadliest glare I could invoke. What the fuck? Hell no. From the corners of my eyes I could see Presley silently cracking up with laughter, her shoulder shaking slightly as she continued to watch Dove, who was smiling brightly in front of those goddamn losers, dressed in nothing but a fucking black dress that barely covered her ass. Her breasts were nearly pouring, her chest heaving slightly as she inhaled soft breaths. Fucking hell. I had jumped to my feet in less than a second, wrestling through the crowd of horny teenage boys just to get to Dove. Her ass is getting eaten. Um, I just turned 21. T today is my birthday. Happy B birthday to me. The crowd roared with a chorus of happy birthday in response of her statement. My jaw clenched painfully, finally wrestling my way towards the front of the stage where I could watch her, pink cheeks flushed with heat, the effect of the alcohol that was coursing through her veins. Her brown curls tousled over the side of her shoulder, revealing the bare skin between her collarbones and neck. The same spot I used to kiss. Fuck. Not now. Dove. 
I called out in a deep voice, the timbre of my voice booming through the room, and effortlessly captured her attention. She glanced down, jutting those sexy pink fleshy lips out with an adorable look that almost had me falling prey, but I resisted. Get down. Now. But but I'm having fun and, and I made friends. She told me with an excited smile, bopping on one feet, which made the movement of her breasts much noticeable. Damn it. The crowd of young teenage boys started cheering, their hands parentheses around their lips as they yelled out. Show us your tits, baby. Don't be shy. Baby. Fuck. Don't move. Stay right there, I commanded in a deep authoritative voice before rounding around the stage and climbed from the stairs to where she was. I grabbed gentle hold of her waist, my fingers digging into her soft skin as I pulled her small body against me, and I nearly cummed in my pants as she pushed her body tighter against mine, the feeling of her curves melting into me. Shit. Calm yourself down. Shrugging off my suit jacket, I motioned for her to raise her hands, tugging her arms through the hands of the jacket. Apparently Dove found that funny, because she had started to giggle softly, her laughs muffled against my chest. Fuck, I can't even be mad at her cute ass. Walking down from the stage, I shot a chilling glare towards the crowd, grumbling darkly under my breath. Fucking horny bastards. Dove was the only thing keeping me from blowing their fucking brains out. I was going to take care of my girl, I could kill them later. Bastards. Do you need a ride? I asked Presley, and I noticed that she wasn't necessarily drunk but she was a bit tipsy, and I knew if anything happened to her, it would absolutely break Dove's soft big heart. She slowly shook her head, gathering her things while jutting a thumb to the young man in the back of the room, and I could barely even concentrate on what she was saying, with Dove sneakily tickling my waist every chance she got. Dove gripped Presley into a hug, plastering a big kiss on the side of her dark smooth cheek before waving her goodbye. I wrapped her in my jacket, holding her close to my body, but despite that, I wanted to carry her into my arms and away from the club. Yet her bare legs were showing, the short black dress did nothing to hide her blessed features, and though I was grateful for that, I couldn't stop thinking about how many people had seen her in the dress. Perhaps how many perverts. Wakey wakey, Dove gushed in a soft voice, giggling as she tickled my sides in an attempt to invoke a laugh out of me. I shook my head at her form of entertainment, helping her from the club into my black sleek car which was parked at the curb. Opening the passenger seat, I placed Dove in the front, leaning over to buckle her seatbelt, and I felt her soft lips whisper against my ear. I? I think I'm going to continue being mad at you, tomorrow. I'm. I'm just so tired right now. I know. I fucking messed up, baby. I got, scared and I ran like a coward, like the coward I am, I told her in a low gentle voice, my fingers stroking through her dark curls, and she unconsciously leaned into my touch. I hurt you, and I hate myself for that, and I'm so fucking sorry, Dove. I'm so sorry. Can you? Can you tell me this tomorrow? I don't think I'm G going to remember, and I really really want to remember. She told me with a small, adorable pout. Resisting the small smile that tugged at my lips, I couldn't help but place a soft kiss in the crook of her neck, sighing with content. Home. Anything you say, Topolina. Now be a good girl for me, and sit properly, hum. Yes sir, yes captain, my captain. She reluctantly agreed, sitting upright, and placed her hands in her lap. Good girl. I walked around the car slipping into the driver's seat, yet I didn't move an inch, not until I was completely satisfied that Presley was safe, with whoever she went home with. With a slow sigh, I pulled away from the nightclub, glancing over to take note of the fact that Dove was leaning against the door, her face squeezed against the window, as she drew imaginary circles with her fingers. Looks like someone's having a good time. I commanded the heat to full blast, knowing how sensitive Dove was to the weather. Unconsciously I began driving the same route to my house, and it wasn't until we were less than five minutes away from home that Dove suddenly decided that she developed in thirst for McDonald's. Despite the fact that I was strong-willed, I couldn't help but succumb to her request when she looked at me with those big brown eyes filled with tears. Damn it. Thirty minutes later, we were riding back home with bags filled with salty fries and fatty food, the car was filled with unnerving silence, 
almost like the calm after the tornado, surrounded by a visual display of destruction. I'm still angry at you, Dove mumbled softly, chewing on a fry as she dipped it into ketchup. Just because, just because you buy me food doesn't m mean that I love you again because I don't. I definitely don't heart you, but thank you. Love? I blinked slowly, squeezing her bare thighs firmly, the feel of her warm silky skin beneath my fingers. Mm. -hmm. I didn't know if she would actually allow me to touch her if she was sober, but I didn't fucking care, I needed this. I needed to feel her in my arms, feel that she was safe and sound, and everything I had done wasn't a waste. Everything I had done to protect her. What, what can I say except you're welcome? For the tides, the sun. She mumbled clumsily singing the lyrics from Moana, but her silly hiccups kept interrupting her singing. I couldn't help but laugh at her cuteness, absently drawing circles on her bare skin. Dove was utterly adorable when she was drunk, but I wasn't inclined to let her get drunk again, unless I was present. Though, moments like these when she was just being silly made it easier to forget about all the danger I willingly submitted her into by caring about her. As I pulled into the driveway of the mansion, I shut the garage door, locking us in, and rounded around the car to reach the passenger side so I could scoop her into my arms. She snuggled into my chest, shivering at the chill in the garage, and then proceeded to sleepily sing a song from the movie Lion King. She really likes that movie. I carried her through the dark hallway, finding the pair of Roddy's whimpering over her as I walked down the path to my bedroom. With a hushed command, I commanded the large dogs out of the room leaving us both in silence. I glanced down back at her, noticing that she was already knocked out, mumbling softly in her sleep, before I gently laid her down on my bed and turned on the bedside lamp. A soft breath escaped her parted pink lips as she snuggled into the thick covers, trying to escape the soft radiating glow of the lamp. Her arms unconsciously shot out of the covers, absently searching for something, and when I slipped my fingers into her small ones, she relaxed against the covers, whispering my name and fell back into her deep slumber. Shit. I should have told her to take her clothes off before she fell asleep. Damn. Gently, I attempted to shake her out of her sleep, but despite that, it did nothing. With a deep sigh, I reluctantly slipped my fingers out of our intertwined ones, walking to the closet and fetching her one of my white shirts she loved. I came to the other side of the bed, sitting just beside her sleeping form, and I closed my eyes, giving the dress a little tug, and it did absolutely nothing at all. Trying a little harder, I yanked it with a little more force, and I could hear her moans of displeasure. Topolina. I shook her gently before placing a soft kiss on her forehead, as an attempt to wake her. Apparently that was the key because her big brown eyes popped open at me, sleepily gazing at me in amazement. You have to change out of those clothes. I doubt they're any comfortable, him. Unexpectedly she just shot me a wide smile, the pair of dimples curving to her cheek, and I found myself melting into the beautiful expression on her face, soaking up each moment. Trust. A trust I had shattered multiple times yet here she was. Yes sir my captain. Dove raised her arms into the air, gesturing for me to help her out of that goddamn black dress. My large hands gripped the hem of her short dress, long fingers dancing across her warm thighs as I forcefully tugged it down yet it did nothing. Harder. Her low, husky voice mumbled. Her tongue slid out of her mouth, wetting those sexy pink lips of hers. I knew she meant to yank the dress harder, but all I could picture was her small body beneath me as I fucked her. Fucking hell. Get it together. A little giggle escaped her lips which made my cock ache with need. Fuck blue balls, I was going to have a fucking blue body. I didn't just want her under me, I wanted to grab every part of her and rub her all around me. Damn it. Her small fingers reached up, tracing the scruffy hair along the edge of my jaw, before she grabbed a fistful of my roughly thick beard. This. I. I like your beard, especially, especially between my legs, Dove giggled cheekily, parting her legs and I couldn't help myself from stealing a bashful glance as she showed me her lacy blue panties. The sight of her in lacy blue panties nearly had me wanting to come, and I had to bite the inside of my cheeks just to grip onto control. I knew the truth even if I had wanted to convince myself otherwise. 
It wasn't about her outfit or the sexy persona she seemed to invoke when she was drink. It was her. Everything about her just seemed to drive me to the brink of insanity. This little curvy vixen of a girl wielded the power to turn me inside out without even trying, without attempting, she had completely captivated my soul. No games or batting her eyelashes coyly at me, there was no need for that. It was simply her, and I belonged to her in every single way. Everything about her was it for me, her sweet smile, her heart of gold, and the little things she did, sticking out her tongue whenever she was deep in thought, how she always forgot to button up those goddamn shirts that it fucking drove me nuts. Battling through the monsters of her mind, yet she failed to recognize the longing stares of men and women that followed her. Her dimpled smile, curves with symmetrical stretch marks that painted the secrets of her body, and I would gladly drown in them. Her little innocent stare that was so fucking addicting, it always made feel exhilarating, almost like I was floating in the sky. Merda. Don't fucking get me started on cuddle time, I couldn't help but get excited for that shit, despite the fact that I hated others touching me. Dove was utterly and unconditionally perfect. Almost like had been made for me. Made to drive me utterly crazy, to the brink of insanity. Shit. Fuck, I wanna marry this girl. Baby. I whispered in a hoarse, tortured voice as her hands ran down my chest, stroking the hard muscles of my shoulders beneath the thin fabric of my shirt. The sight of the dark, intricate calligraphy carved into my skin caught her attention, her big brown eyes fixated on the meaning of my tattoo. Her fingers busily traced the lines of the words painted in pure ink, then dug into my skin in a possessive manner that made my cock jerk. Fuck I love that. Can I see? Her wide brown eyes were filled with excitement. Who was I to deny my girl, especially when she was staring at me with that adorable look? Without hesitation, I grabbed firm hold of the buttons of my shirt, unbuttoning the shirt and peeling the fabric from my skin, and giving her exactly what she asked for. Me. She inhaled sharply, her dark eyes fixated on every aspect of my body, and fuck, if only I could capture this moment for eternity. The way she was gazing at me was intoxicating enough to awake every dormant cell in my body, and I shook my head absently to myself, marveling at the clear brown depths of emotion in her eyes. For a moment, I couldn't breathe, couldn't think, as I struggled to take the beautiful sight of her in. Even with the screaming silence between us, I could feel her, the tiny dark hairs on her arm that rose to attention whenever she was aroused, the beautiful landscape of goosebumps that was shivering across her skin beneath her black dress. The faint freckles scattered across her cheeks and nose, and I found myself falling into them, as though they were the starry summer sky. You're so pretty, she mumbled breathlessly, her heated gaze slid down my body, and her fingers followed the course of action, stroking the foreign calligraphy carved into skin, designs of black whorls and lines. This one one looks new. She was referring to the newly tattoo I had just gotten done by Cosimo, and although my usual tattoo were dark calligraphy with an underlying landscape of nature, this particular tattoo was quite different and special. The delicate beautiful calligraphy FRV illuminated the curve of my neck in a swirls and whorls of glimmering red. The only aspect of color, the illuminating light of sunshine that painted over my body and in my life. My sunshine. She was my sunshine. Dove Renee Van Doren. It's yours, baby. I soaked in the sight of her parted lips and widened brown eyes as she struggled to believe what I had just uttered. Each tattoo on my body represents an important part of my life. And you, Dove, you're the most important part of my life. Say il mio mondo. My world, I told her in a firm yet soft voice, my massive hand resting on top of hers and slowly caressed her clear tiny fingers. You're my world. That's so cool. I feel really, really special. I, it's beautiful. I, I like it. The happy adorable look was still plastered across her face, her eyes flickering to the tattoo every few seconds as she wiggled out of her dress, almost like the tattoo would disappear if she simply blinked. With a loud sigh she mustered a strict look tugging onto the hem of the dress, and I fought the urge to laugh. She was just too adorable to be threatening, even if that was indeed her goal. Stupid, stupid dress, she mumbled, glaring down at the dress. 
Suddenly her brown eyes flickered over to where I was sitting by the bedside. Dove's large brown eyes glimmered, and she pouted, jutting out her bottom lip, consuming my body with urge to bite it. Little H help please? Who was I to deny my girl anything? Come here baby. I grabbed hold of the dress tugging firmly, and a low gasp escaped her lips as the dress came apart easily in my arms, which left her in her lacy blue panties. Shit. Instinctively I shut my eyes closed, clamping a hand over my eyes in case I would be tempted by the little vixen. My fingers found the thick duvet, pulling it over her body, hiding her body from me, and it took almost every muscle inside me not to admire her gorgeous body. Grasping the white shirt in my hands, I weaved the shirt into her head full of wild, massive dark curls and buttoned up each button carefully, reminding myself that she was absolutely wasted. Drunk. Anything she would say to me was useless, I wouldn't touch her. Not even look at her. Anything she wanted, I would gladly obey tomorrow when she could think rationally, and I was absolutely sure she wouldn't even be able to stand the sight of me when she eventually remembered everything I had done to push her away. Fuck, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. Kiss. Her sweet tempting voice asked, and before I knew it, Dove was hefted against my lap her barely covered body pushed against my bare chest and I could feel every single soft part of her. Her curves melting into me, her soft moan as she wiggled in my lap trying to make herself comfortable. Damn it. She was not making this any easier for me. I groaned lowly, tortured by the goddess between my legs. Baby. Baby. I promise. I fucking promise to give you anything you want when you're sober. I can't. You're not thinking logically, Topolina. You're going to regret this tomorrow, baby. Naha. I am thinking. She scrunched up her tiny pink nose, her lips jutting out in bewilderment. Too fucking adorable. Why, why would I regret it if it's only in my dreams? Reaching up, her arms lock attempt to lock around my neck, and even though she was sitting on my lap, I had to bend slightly just for her to reach. So tiny. Gazing at me with that innocent look, she bit down on her fleshy pink lips and my eyes betrayed me, following the erotic motion. Please. Please daddy. Fucking hell. Kiss me please. Her hips slowly moved against me, her warm sheathed pussy rubbing against the hard long tent inside my pants, shattering every control I had. I could feel cum leaking out of the tip, and I commanded myself to stop, biting the inside of my cheeks as an attempt to distract myself. I could feel the blood rushing to my cock, and I was barely holding on, I inhaled sharply through my nose, trying not to imagine the feel of her soft skin between my teeth. Oh my. Her fingers dug into my shoulders as her hips grinded against me, her ass rolling around my cock, and low whimpers left her lips. Fuck. Fuck. Her pants growing heavier, louder as she continued riding the fucking hell out of me. God I'm gonna come. Her big tempting breasts stood out at me through the thin fabric of my white shirt, her sexy hips rolling in and out in an erotic dance, and she was the sexiest fucking thing I had ever seen. No. Forcefully, I choked out the simple word that would eventually be my salvation, and gripped her hips halting her movement. Slowly reaching towards her, I gripped firm hold of her chin forcing her gaze to meet mine. I can't baby. You're not dreaming, this is real. I can't. You're drunk, and I'm already feeling a bit buzzed. Go to sleep, and we'll talk tomorrow, hm? She snatched her chin out of my hold, dark brown eyes pooled with wrecking tears. Why? Is, is it because I'm not a woman? Is that why you don't? Don't want me anymore. What? What the fuck is she saying? My mind flashed back to our past conversation and I swallowed hardly feeling the guilt of my words smashing against me like a crate of heavy concrete, and I only wished I could have gone back in time. I never meant any of it. Any. Baby. Absolutely not. I caressed her flushed cheeks, wiping a lone tear from her cheek. Trust me, you're not a little girl. You're a woman, my woman but I can't, I can't take advantage of you. Baby we can't. If you still want this tomorrow when you're fully sober, I will grant you anything, but not right now. See? Fine. I'll just. 
I'll find someone else to help me. I'll ask Matthew. He'll give me what I I want. Jesus fucking Christ dove. My voice deepened, turning darker than I intended. My chin dropped down to gaze at her, my lips twisted into a snarl, and I inhaled a deep breath, in and out of my nose, the carnal heat between us sticky like caramel yet suffocating. God damn it. Fuck. I couldn't believe she had the courage to mention Matthew. My little angel was indeed bolder than I had originally thought. Especially when she was drunk. Don't. If you want to act like a little brat, then you'll get treated like one. Damn it. You drive me so fucking crazy. I grasped the hem of the white shirt, tugging it harshly to cover her bare hips. The tiniest cutest pout danced across her lips, big brown eyes watching me. Don't look at me with those big brown eyes. Bed. Now. Matthew my ass. Fuck Matthew. But. My large hands gripped her waist through the thin fabric of the white shirt, and I gently scooped her off my lap, and into the soft silky sheets. Bed or I'll sell the fucking dogs, I commanded her in a deep authoritative voice that left absolutely no room for discussion. My tatted fingers softly stroked the side of my flushed cheeks, firmly gripping her chin to meet my eyes. I'll forget about your little comment tonight since you're not exactly lucid. Unless you want his head delivered in a box, don't mention that little boy's name again. See? No. I please don't. Her soft voice squeaked lightly, like she knew what I was truly capable of. And everything I said was the truth. The only thing stopping me from delivering Matthew's head in a box for even talking to her, was Dove. Good. Now to bed you go. Fine. Can can we cuddle? I pursed my lips thoughtfully at the request. She sighed reluctantly curling into a ball, and nestled closer to my naked chest. The side of her face laid on my chest, tousled brown waves of curls tumbled against my skin. You're so warm and you, you smell good. Um hum. A few moments passed before I gently placed a kiss on her temple. The natural smell of her scented shampoo flooded my nostrils and I unconsciously snuck my nose into the comfort of her hair. Baby cakes? Um. Fuck I hadn't heard that in so long that my heart couldn't resist skipping a damn beat. What was I? A love-stricken teenager. Tell me, me something. Anything please? I registered the warm feeling of her small fingers absently drawing circles on my abs before they found their way to my neck, brushing past her tattooed initials. You're the first woman I've ever been with. The first woman who's managed to make me smile easily. I never liked hugging until you came along, you know that? I answered shamelessly, firmly grasping her hips and effortlessly pulled her on the top of my body. One tattooed hand rested behind her back, caressing her soft skin, and my free hand squeezed her thighs eliciting a blissful sigh from her lips. When I first saw you in the bathroom, I waited for your reaction, the same one everyone had, but you only looked at me with fascination. Those big brown eyes pulling me in. You stared at me like I was the most beautiful thing you had ever seen, I murmured softly never having told anyone about that piece of sacred information. You are baby cakes. She yawned softly, mumbling incoherent sentences under her breath. Her hand curled around my neck, beautiful pink lips gently planting a light kiss on my chest and I felt was love. God, how did I ever live without this woman? Bed, Topolina. We'll talk tomorrow. My fingers threaded through her dark tendrils of hair, twirling a curl around my finger. I promise I'll fix this baby. No matter what. She went limp under me, and I glanced up slightly from the comfort of her hair to notice that she was completely knocked out. Her soft breathy sighs filled the room, the rhythm of her heartbeat synchronized with mine. With a low sigh, my fingers brushed the stray curl off her forehead as I gazed at the woman I was always doomed to love. To care for, to protect. My dove. My dark eyes completely fixated on her taking in the beautiful sight of her flushed cheeks and thick long eyelashes that seemed to flutter against my chest as she exhaled a peaceful sigh. I never liked the concept of cuddling with others, but Dove was an exception. She was always an exception to any rule in my life. So beautiful. My white shirt had ridden up her tanned legs, exposing her beautiful stomach and pert ass, and I tugged the thin fabric down further, 
draping the thick duvet over our body. Unconsciously, my fingers found their way beneath the duvet, rubbing my large hands over her stomach. I'm going to put my baby there. Almost like Dove could hear my thoughts, she shifted just slightly as her fingers gripped my neck even tighter before she exhaled a low sigh, weaving her legs in between my thighs. I sighed in bliss, wanting nothing but to hold her like this forever. At least I could enjoy this moment, before tomorrow morning when everything would be revealed. And I planned on telling her everything, everything about my past, everything about her past because she was my future. And I would be damned if I lost her again. Chapter 29 Dove I had woken up about an hour ago, the pounding headache against my brain reminding me exactly what Darcy had always meant when he said don't drink kid, and I never knew I would be regretting the day I didn't listen to Darcy. Drinking was a meanie, it brought my wild side out and retorted in an intense hangover the next morning. When I woke up, I knew exactly where I was and who I came home with. Every intricate piece of memory from last night wove through my mind like a kaleidoscope, Andre pulling from the stage, wrapping his suit jacket around me, a look of jealousy and concern on his face, before he took me home, but not before stopping by McDonald's. Yep, I remembered the part where I started bawling like a baby when he told me the closest McDonald's was closed, and willingly drove about 30 minutes just so I could get my chicken nuggets. Dig me a hole. Now and make it deep. I had pretty much begged him to have sex with me, but he didn't. I would have felt it, at least though I did remember asking him to make me come, and he did exactly that. Not as a little girl. My cheeks flushed beat with embarrassment, cringing as my past words flashed through my mind. And now I was currently hiding out in the comfort of his room, thick covers draped over my body, over my face, as I peeked through the covers every few minutes, desperately thinking of a way to flee without running into him. Maybe I can just jump outside the window. Then I won't have to face him, but life is too precious to be moping. I'm strong. I can do this. I can do this. Yes I can. Yes I can. Dove. Dark amber eyes peered at me from beneath those striking long lashes that framed his eyes, and I found myself growing anxious over the fact that his eyelashes were prettier than mine. Focus. Good morning, his husky morning voice spoke in the hallway, a voice as warm as honey, luring me to comfort as I began to lower my barricades for him. My eyes unconsciously drifted to his dark curls pulled into a bun with a black hair tie. Sugars. He had caught me just as I was about to make my escape. At least my merchandise is covered by his shirt. My dark eyes flew down to my fingernails, playing and chewing on my nails despite the fact that I knew it was indeed a bad habit. H. Hi, I whispered in a shaky voice, wanting nothing more to flee. No talking. I didn't want to talk again, and hear those shattering words of his. I didn't want to be near him. His jaw clenched painfully, dark eyes deepening with a certain emotion, and I held my breath. Waiting. Waiting for his words. I wanted the beautiful, unattainable man that had broken my heart multiple times, betrayed me, and I didn't just want him emotionally. I wanted him physically. I wanted him to view me as a woman, not a little girl he couldn't care enough about to make her come. I wanted someone to view me as a woman. Chapter 30 Andre I inhaled a deep breath exiting the building I had slowly began to be accustomed to for the past month. Dove had convinced me to talk to someone about everything that happened in my past, and I never knew I would be grateful for that. Not only did I want to be a better man for her, but I owed it up to myself, I wanted to finally face the past and move on. My eyes glanced at the phone in my hands, flickering at the several text messages I had received while I was occupied with my session. Not bothering to read any of the messages, my gaze immediately fixated on Dove's contact icon, fingers sliding across the screen as I opened her message. T, he. I'm in my way to pick you up, don't worry, I'll driz be safe, scouts hauntser equals three equals. Jesus fucking Christ. I couldn't help but smile at her message, knowing damn well that she wouldn't arrive here in the span of ten minutes, when the drive was supposed to take five minutes. 
Dove would absolutely be careful, obeying every single speed limit and rules, despite the fact that people would be definitely honking. I regretted absolutely nothing. I loved the fact the excitement in her eyes when she found out that we had matching cars, just like she had always wanted. The soft beep of the car shook me out of my thoughts, my curious gaze searching for those damn big brown eyes that I loved so much or heart like Dove would say. Mine. Her big brown eyes filled with excitement as she recognized me, shifting the gear on park before she slowly slipped out of the car. A small chuckle left my lips, my firm hands grasping onto her hips through the thin silky fabric of her sundress. Such a little klutz. Hi. Hi. She gushed excitedly, the smell of her sweet intoxicating scent filled my nostrils and I couldn't help but grip onto her tighter against my chest. Too fucking cute. How was it? Even as I held onto her, I could feel the slight bopping of her feet as she wiggled in my arms, wrapping a hand around my waist and giving me a friendly hug. Fucking hell. Even after a month of doing absolutely everything to try to her trust, I was still fucking stuck in the friend zone. Apparently Beast found it hilarious because he couldn't stop himself from blabbing my business to Cosimo and Fabiano. Fuck them. I want to marry this woman. Fine, talked about facing my past, I responded in a deep gruffly voice intending for my voice to come out softer, but despite that she merely shot me a cheeky smile. Fuck she was absolutely gorgeous. Glancing up at me from those thick long lashes, ruining me with those big brown eyes filled with trust. I released her from my arms, taking back a small step to admire the little goddess in front of me. Her cheeks flushed beet red as she slowly realized what I was doing, her fingers tucking a loose curl behind her ear. God, I couldn't believe how real she truly was. My dark eyes fixated on her, soaking the sight of her dress. It was a simple floral green mini dress that completely hugged her hips, wrapped around the curve of her waist. Chapter 31 Dove Andre Gevenis was a menace to society, and teenage girls all over the world. Tall, elegant, eye-opening and unattainable to others. Not to mention, he ruled over New York with an iron fist. The mere whisper of his name was like lethal poison that burned through the hearts of millions. Penetrating, in clear amber eyes that made grown men weep, and women burned with seduction. Yet I only found comfort in his arms. I only found love. Living with Andre proved more difficult than I had originally thought. He was always busy. Talking on the phone in Italian, traveling with Fabiano every week, but he always made time for me. Always. Every night he walked through the door, he always gave me his immediate undivided attention. Sweeping me into his strong arms and planting a kiss on my lips, and listened to my rambling about the day. And in the night, he possessed my body with his gentle touches and shattering kisses, focusing on a new body part to worship. I wasn't the best cook. I was horrible at anything that required the stove, and Andre couldn't create a decent meal as well without the help of Fabiano. He was Andre personal cook and chauffeur. We quickly settled into a pattern of takeouts for dinner, choosing a cheesy Disney movie to watch, and I would often fall asleep in his arms halfway through the movie. He didn't mind. He never minded my destructive bathroom habits, the fact that I forget to flush every time, I left the bathroom door open when I was tinkling, and he was constantly finding pieces of my hair down the drain and around the sink. He never complained, only cleaned up after me. Sometimes it was hard to believe that such a beautiful, crudely man belonged to me, that he loved me despite my past, despite everything. That he didn't want anyone else but me, and then I realized I didn't care, he was mine, and I didn't want to compete with anyone. Ever. You're terrible at this little boss, Cosimo chuckled deeply, and I passed him my bad hand of poker cards. Cosimo, Beastie and I had been playing poker for the past 30 minutes to pass the time, yet I was terrible at poker even for a beginner. I'm sorry. I frowned, anxiously twisting my fingers. I had often watched Andre play with others, peeking from the comfort of his arms, but he was terrifyingly exceptional at poker sparing no mercy to others. A small pout settled on my lips as I shoved a $20 bill into Cosmio's prosthetic hand. Ah come on. Don't give me that look. 
Beast and I went easy on you. Imagine playing Silvio, I doubt he'll have any mercy. Cosimo placed the $20 bill with the rest of my money I had willingly gave him. My curious gaze flickered over to where Silvio was sitting on the couch, flipping through the inky pages of the book he had been reading for the past hour. Whenever Andre was out of town each of the guys had to watch, babysit me, and it was Silvio's night to babysit me, but Cosimo and Beastie offered to hang out with me as well. Chapter 32 Dove The sound of Andre low throaty laughter broke the silence in the room, his dark eyes crinkling into slits and his lips broke into a wide dimpled smile. He pressed his beautiful face into the crook of my neck trying to hide his amusement, yet it failed. His tattooed arms hugged me closer to his taut body, and those beautiful amber eyes stared at me with a softness that I rarely saw, a total and complete vulnerability in a powerful man who was normally so guarded and analytical in every aspect of his life. Everyone in the room paused, shocked by Darcy's news and the sound of Andre rumbling gruff laughter, not used to his vulnerability. Merda. His deep voice chuckled, his chest shook slightly against my body. And here I thought my family was a mess, hum. Shit. My face flushed as all eyes turned on us, and Andre kept his smiling face hidden into my neck, unable to stop the deep fits of laughter that left his throat. Riley and the rest of my brothers raised an inquiring brow, a look of shock settling on their faces as they watched Andre plant a gentle kiss on the curve of my shoulder. The intimate sweet gesture conveying much more emotion than words could ever say. He's not always like this, I told them trying to defend Andre's ability to find humor. He laughed. Actually laughed. If him passing the salt earlier wasn't embarrassing enough, everyone staring at us with wide eyes made me feel naked. I inhaled a deep breath, shushing Andre and admonished him in a quiet voice. Darcy coughed out awkwardly as an attempt to bring the attention back to him. Not funny man. So yeah. I'm getting fucking married. I'm 25 for fuck's sake. Dove isn't a child anymore, if she also wants to get married, then she can. She's 21 for fuck's sake, stop treating her like she's 5. I did. Whoa. He's being nice. Champ, is this how you feel? Do you also think we're treating you like you're 5? Bellamy asked me for the first time ever in my life. His dark, calculating eyes focused on me, prodding for answers. I could only register the feeling of Andre, large hands coaxing the bare skin of my shoulder blades, a silent reassurance through my inner turmoil. Timidly, I replied with a firm nod. I'm not a child anymore and I'm not, broken, my voice came out soft, barely a whisper in the eerily silent room. Bellamy's eyes, eyes of melted honey, softened at my words and he blinked back the sudden wet tears forming in his eyes. I'm not. Saws he's gone and he can't hurt me anymore even if he's alive somewhere. H he he can't. Chapter 33 Dove Dark midnight black strands of inky locks framed his face as the dark amber eyes, eyes with warmth of burning golden flame, looked down at me through thick framed glasses. Big naked body pressed firmly to mine, my drowsy face buried into the crook of his warm neck, and our legs were tangled and intertwined with the soft silky sheets of the bed. One tattooed hand was inside my panties, cupping my core, and another hand firmly grasped the book, his warm eyes flickering from the inky pages of the book, then down to my sleeping frame. The hard bulge pressed firmly against my stomach alerted me, and it was evidently clear that Andre was big everywhere. Especially from the burning sharp pain that throbbed between my thighs, reminding me of the sinful place he had taken me to last night. Through drowsy lids, I gazed at the thin cigarette at the edge of his pink lips, watching as the thick white trail of smoke danced its way to the ceiling. Shish. His husky, dark morning voice murmured as I wiggled uncomfortably, in his tattooed arm, latched around me so possessively. Back to sleep, Tessero. P. That's all I needed to say before he reluctantly released me from his warm, naked chest. Slowly, I arose from the bed in my glorious naked sight, fumbling with the soft stained sheets around my waist before I took a step. Throbbing pain in my core immediately halted my movement, causing me to inhale a sharp breath. Jesus flipping Christ. Quickly, 
I hurried into the bathroom and tinkled then brushed my teeth. With each slow step I took, I found myself back in the bedroom grasping the sheets as I found myself to be self-conscious. It didn't matter that the man had seen me naked last night, or the fact that he knew every single mole on my body, I couldn't help the flush that spread on my cheek when he met my eyes. The look on his face was pure insatiable hunger. Like he was starving for me. His intense dark eyes observed me silently, his pink lips pursing as he slowly inhaled the thick smoke. God you're so fucking beautiful. You are too, I softly mumbled as I climbed into the bed. His tattooed strong arms latched around my waist, gracefully tugging my body upright and sat me on his rippled chiseled stomach. Alert as ever, his hard thick cock pressed firmly against my butt, making me giggle slightly. A soft tender smile played along the edge of his lips, his dark tendrils of hair a wild mess and I couldn't help but raise my hand, running my small fingers through his hair. Sugars, I could get used to waking up to the naked sight of him. I had only done it once in just a few hours, and I already wanted it forever. I wanted him forever. How was your night baby? He asked softly, his beard nuzzling my skin as he rained light kisses along my bare shoulders and I could only moan lowly in response. Hard-muscled hand gently grabbed hold of my chin, stroking the side of the face as his tatted thumb grazed my cheek. That good him. Chapter 34 Andre It's been a while since I've seen you. Hasn't it? How are you dealing with everything? The young woman asked in a low voice, dark eyes peering at me through thick-rimmed glasses. You know there's no point in paying for therapy if you're not going to actually talk. Good. I answered, my voice deep and gruffly exhausted with worry. My gaze flickered down to the cherry scrunchie around my wrist, gently tugging at the hair tie every few seconds. The young woman's eyes landed on the simple, insignificant action, automatically reading my body language. Dark eyes squinted at me, almost condemning my words. Good? That's all I get. I've been seeing you for weeks now, Andre, I think I deserve a little more than good. Great. Who was it? I mean it has to be someone pretty significant in your life because I've never seen you like this. Is today a significant holiday? Perhaps an anniversary? Cheryl. I released in frustrated sigh halting her words. Threading my hand through my dark tendrils of hair, curls that had grew longer over time, I crossed my legs and I slowly began to twist the silver rings carved into my fingers. I don't know what you're expecting from me but I'm great. Wonderful in fact. As usual Cheryl, the new therapist I had started seeing, blatantly ignored my statement, her curious gaze flickering to the hair tie around my wrist. Let's talk about that. You've been picking at it for the last hour. What's the significance? Nothing. I answered a little too quickly. Fuck. Cheryl raised a blonde eyebrow, then grasped her black pen and scribbled some therapist shit on the thick paper she held. Probably something along the lines of refusing to open up, or some shit. It's hers, my deep voice murmured in hushed whispers, uttering the same words I hadn't spoken in a while. Cheryl nodded slowly, jotting some therapist notes on her notebook, before she glanced back towards me. Scrutinizing dark eyes behind thick-rimmed glasses silently demanded for me to continue, and so I did. Tisk. You don't get a name, Cheryl. Not today. Fair enough. Did you love her? My lips pursed thoughtfully, and I carefully considered her abstract choice of words. Do I love her? Yes, I do. I know where she is every minute of the day, every second. Some might say I may be even obsessed, but I believe they go hand in hand. Obsession, love. Love, obsession. They may even be the same. Glancing down at my fingers, I tugged harshly at the cherry scrunchie, her fucking scrunchie. My previous therapist, forgot his fucking name, encouraged me to step back. He said it was unhealthy. What do you think, Cheryl? You used present tense. I assume she's still alive. Cheryl muttered under her breath, scribbling whatever the fuck she had been writing down for the past hour. Bingo. Smart. You didn't answer my question, Cheryl. You never answered mine. 
She dropped her black pen firmly on the paper, breathing in a deep sigh. Dark eyes behind those rimmed glasses traveling to my face and slowly yet silently observed my tattooed body. Chapter 35 Dove Wide dark brown eyes like those of melted honey gazed at me through the blinding mirror. Cascade of full dark curls fell down my bare silky shoulders, pink fleshy lips curled into a small pout. The woman staring back at me was beyond gorgeous, a illuminating glow to her brown skin. She was breathtaking in every way and took the center spotlight in the pure white off-the-shoulder glittering mermaid wedding dress with chantilly lace topped with white petals that edged the shoulder sleeves of the strapless crepe wedding dress. The white facade juxtaposed with a full back and train adorned in floral lace placements while depicting elegant floral motifs in lace and thread embroidery. It was a simple elegant wedding dress, yet it brought tears to my eyes as I imagined loudly declaring my undying love for Andre. Damn it. I'm going to cry, I can't. You look so beautiful, Presley softly murmured, pools of shining tears flooded her eyes. I think this is the dress, babe. What do you think? It's woe. I murmured lowly, unable to respond back in actual words. I had never dreamed of getting married, ever because I could have never thought I would find love in the devil of New York. I never imagined that a tall, big, tattooed man would storm into my life and wholeheartedly whirl me by surprise, a man that was crude, brutal with his words at times. Cruel, cold-blooded, and unattainable, never to me. A moody, controlling man in every aspect of his life that ruthlessly owned and belonged to me in every way I could imagine. Everyone who watched us would think we looked a little odd together. Andre with his tall muscular physique, roughly dark beard tattoos and his menacingly haunting eyes, and I was short, barely reached his chest and did not belong in his dangerous secretive world, but none of that mattered. I think Andre is going to flip out of his mind when he sees you in this. Presley whistled in low tone, her dark eyes scanning my elegant white gown from head to toe. I couldn't help the wide smile that remained on my lips as I thought about Andre's reaction on the day of our wedding. I changed out of the wedding gown, wincing softly as I bent down. My soft fingers traced over the tiny, minuscule scar across my shoulder where I had gotten shot about three months ago, the day I thought I had truly reached the end of the line. A day that terrified and terrorized me every night I closed my eyes. I had desperately tried to forget about the accident, but it was almost impossible. For the first few weeks as I recovered, I was startled by any sudden sounds and would immediately hide, protecting myself from incoming danger or what I had perceived as danger. Even as I stood, I knew without a doubt that I wasn't the same girl I was about two years ago when I first met Andre, but I couldn't care less. No. The answer is no. Don't make me say no again, Silvio's low husky voice reprimanded me, his dark olive green eyes narrowing into slits from the screen of his phone. Chapter 36 Andre Pair of big green eyes filled with tears melted into mine, and I heard the quick padding of little feet on the bare wooden floor. A tiny body collapsed into my legs, tiny arms flung around my knees, and a gut-wrenching sob burst out of her trembling lips. I bent down slightly, hunched over on my knees, and gently scooped her into my arms. Instinctively, my hand came to rest on her backside, softly stroking the side of her face with my tatted fingers. Before I could stop the desire, I found myself murmuring quiet words of reassurance into her ear, desperately willing to stop her crying. Don. The young woman called out, her voice filled with a hint of underlying concern and panic. She stepped closer, raising her hands in the air and motioned for me to hand the girl back. I can take her back. I'm very sorry for the bother. Come on, Elena. Elena shook her head adamantly as she refused to go back into her mother's embrace. I couldn't help but stifle a smile, rubbing her back gently. I don't touch children. I spat out, my voice laced with hot venom at the thought that Alina's mother could possibly think I would hurt her daughter. Sit down, Sophia. I, Alina's mother paused, silently exchanging glances with me then her dark eyes fixated on the giggling little girl. Her big green eyes sparkled with excitement awed with the ink tattoos on my neck that seemed to burst to life with each movement. Please don't hurt her. She's not a part of this, she's innocent. 
My child has nothing to do with Antonio's blood business. I inhaled a sharp sigh. I don't hurt children, Sophia. I've said that once and I won't repeat myself. Now sit the fuck down. Alina's soft babbling caught my attention as her tiny hands grasped the edge of my white collar, and I instinctively softened my voice. Children never really took a liking to me, they were either watching me with teary eyes, or I accidentally did something to scare them away, yet, this little girl sought comfort in my arms. Weird. Very weird. Antonio's timid eyes peeked up from the barricades of the wooden floor. He actually had the fucking audacity to look me in the eye like the coward he was. Don, my fingers curled around the cold metal, and I carefully pointed it to his head, then pressed it up against his temple, almost daring him to speak. And he did. Sono leal. Cosa ho fato per meritarmi questo. I'm loyal. What have I done to deserve this? Hum. I twisted my head to the side a dark sinister feeling engulfing the piece of my heart I had brought from home with me. Loyal? You're fucking loyal? My deep voice came out harsh, unapologetic and full of control all at the same time. Sophia started tearing up, her trembling fingers clung to the fabric of her dress, and I knew she was undoubtedly concerned about Elena than her idiotic man of a husband. A solitaire that I had once given the benefit of doubt, never trust. Never that. Always be fucking smarter than the people you hire. Chapter 37 Andre Temptation The Root of All Hunger An Invitation to Sin Dove Van Doren My Little Temptation The Darkest Temptation I've Ever Had I had never been as tempted to ruin her silky delicate skin with my calloused hands, taint her pure heart with every bit of darkness in me, and sniff out the addicting spark in those beautiful brown eyes. I wanted to ruin her with every fucking muscle inside of me. Wrap my whole fist twice, maybe thrice around her goddamn hair, and willingly drag her into oblivion with me. For years, I had pinned over her like a fucking dog, and now it was so hard to even believe that she was mine. Every morning, I woke up to the gentle butterfly kisses that trailed down my spine, absorbing her sweet soft snores that I was absolutely consumed with. Her tiny fingers hopelessly twisted with mine, the shine of the pure white sheets that reflected off her naked back exposing the minuscule's moles everywhere. And I could stay in that moment willingly listening to the sound of her snores. Bliss. You know how it felt when you finally got something you had pinned, willed for so long, the shattering addicting warm flush that exploded through you. The foreign feeling of selfishness and doubt because I finally had her after years, that was what it felt. Fucking heaven. Paradise. And there was no way in hell I would ever leave that paradise. Ever. Did she consume me to the point where my brain completely stopped functioning? Absolutely. And I loved every single moment of it. I was selfish, absolutely greedy dragging her into a world she knew nothing about, but I couldn't care less. She couldn't spend one night without my cock in her, and I couldn't, wouldn't survive a minute without her. If she wasn't alive, I would find every possible way to take myself out along with her. I would rather die tomorrow than living the rest of my life without knowing her. I couldn't imagine living in a world where all of her fucking love for Kat didn't exist, and her sunshine smile. Dove Van Doren was my vice. And she was unconditionally mine. And I would be damned if I ever let anyone ruin the only good fucking thing in my life. And right now, I was on my way to witness just how fucking blessed I was. Or maybe show her how much I was absolutely consumed with her, and perhaps treat her like the fucking slut she was. My slut, of course. Respectfully. With the suddenness of a cat leaping upon its prey, I leaned forward and caught her into my arms. Molding my chest to her back, I pressed my hardness into her round ass. My warm lips pressed to the side of her neck, whispering softly as I dragged her into the hell and heaven that were whirled together in my head. My own secret hell. And I would gladly burn there. I distinctly remember wanting to hear how sorry you are for misbehaving. Sharp unfiltered gasp as I folded her fragile body towards the wall, turning her chest to mine. Molded together endlessly. 
Seems like my dove's grown a pair of wings, hum. Those goddamn cheeks blazed with a hidden desire, instantly seducing every little bit of anger I had felt till I entered our bedroom. Chapter 38 Dove Andre Genovese always maintained his calm composure. Always so dignified, elegant yet causally cruel all at once, and in this moment he was anything but calm. From the edge of the bed, I watched quietly as he paced back and forth, tugging on the cherry scrunchie around his wrist before he lit a cigarette. Dark midnight black strands of inky locks cascaded down his neck and framed his face as his dark amber eyes eyes filled with warmth peered at me. Gorgeous, sexy, compelling but he was also lethal, frightening and deadly. A deep gaze that made me feel protected yet I didn't know if it would save me, kill me or break my heart. Come here, his low husky voice murmured, igniting a spark deep down in my belly. I didn't have to be told twice before I arose from the bed, and with shaky legs I sauntered towards him. Strong arms corded around my hips, his gorgeous face bent down on par with mine, and I felt the light brush of his lips against mine. Let him break every single part of me into a thousand pieces and deny me life, but I am not letting of you. Never. I, I. I paused during mid-speech, glancing down at our intertwined fingers. Every muscle and bone in my body was persuading me, screaming vividly at me to flee, and I felt consumed by the need to hide from him. This man would eventually be my ruin, my complete destruction, and I would gladly let him. We're not done. Andre deep voice tethered me to reality. He always managed to do that. Look at me, Tessero. He tilted my chin to meet his mesmerizing gaze, clouded with a hardened personality he presented to others. Yet it always seemed to soften when we were alone. His gaze on me was intense, and I couldn't look away. It almost felt as if I was revealing my entire soul to him in this moment. We're not done until I say so. And right now, the smell of the smoke consumed my nostrils as he pressed a lingering kiss on my nose. We are far from done. Do you understand, amore mio? Yes? I answered, a little breathless from the effect of his possessive words. Good. Give me a kiss, baby. Strong hand clutched my throat and effortlessly tugged my face to his. In a single instant, our lips met, tangled endlessly evoking somersaults deep low in my belly. His possessive greedy hands raced engulfed over the curves of my body, and I whimpered to his searing lips. His tongue plunged over my lips, and he pulled my frame against him. My breasts mashed to his muscled chest, my fingers curled in his dark hair. With the taste of his lips, I could feel every single emotion and feeling he was communication that even words could not convey. A flutter that became a tightening in my stomach, as he nibbled around the edge of my lips in a slow rhythm, before landing a passionate, relentless kiss on my lips. It was almost as if he was telling me how much he loved me, yet he was unable to actually out it into words. Slowly parting his lips from mine, I felt the warm squeeze of his hands around my hips before he patted it softly. You're going to go with Silvio, hum? He gazed into my eyes, lips parting like he wanted to say more, but he shook it away with a soft sigh. Chapter 39 Dove Chest pressed to the soft pure sheets of the bed, the hair tie in my trembling fingers as I blinked back my tears before it finally escaped and trickled down my cheek. Relentlessly pouring down like salt on an open wound. Haunted by grave reality. I could hear my breath quickening, the stone in my stone making it difficult for me to breathe, the sound of my harsh breathing echoing in the room as I tried to calm my heart rate down. I felt utterly powerless, the feeling of a heart attack, a life-threatening allergic reaction, or imminent death overwhelmed me. Principessa. No. No. I sobbed into the sheets of the bed. Get him back. We, we have to get him back. Little boss. Soft fingers gently attempted to pry the scrunchie from my fingers yet I resisted, a low groan deep in my throat. I didn't know how long I laid on the ground, curled into a ball with tears steaming down my face and thinking one thought. I want to die. I can't do this. Everything then stilled in slow motion as if I was stuck in a time loop where I couldn't scream, I could talk, and all I could do was open my mouth attempting to find that words, but even words had deserted me. 
left me. Just like he did. A feeling of impending doom built in me, like being thrown in a closet and locked indefinitely, and I was lost in some abandoned panic-infested hell, with no chance that anyone would hear my terror-filled screams or run to my rescue. Extremely claustrophobic, I began to hyperventilate at the thought of dying. Completely alone. The feeling of complete hopelessness dawned onto me, and it felt as if I was stripped of any and all control, as if the world was spinning out from under me, and there was nothing to hold me down. A gripping sensation burned through my whole chest and throat area, as if a lethal vice was squeezing me, then I started shaking literally to the core of my body. Shish. My arms outstretched out of instinct, desperately fighting against the hands that gently wrapped around my waist. Swept me into his arms, my teary face pressed firmly against the rustic fabric of his suit. My heart started pumping like I was running Mount Everest, frozen, suspended in motion, and I used every muscle in my body to stifle a whimper, forcing myself to breathe. Shish Topolina. His raspy deep voice spoke firmly dissipating bits and pieces of the terror I felt, but it was like my mind was taunting me. Messing around with my mental state and deceiving my reality. His strong arms caged around me like electric wire, the sound of water running as he placed me on the ground. My feet crumbling, shaking beneath his strong weight, unable to hold my collapsing body steady. Breathe. In and out. Breathe with me. The sound of the softness and uttermost gentleness in his tone wrought heart-wrecking tears to my eyes. My breathing became harsh, an odd sob-gasp sound escaped my mouth, and my body started to shake violently. Chapter 40 Epilogue Andre Pink fuzzy socks peeked out beneath the thick covers, deep brown curls tousled over the pure white of the sheets, light heavenly snores filled the dark, silent room, and I absorbed every bit of those beautiful sounds. I tugged the dark tie from my neck, unbuckled the gun from my holster, glancing around the room and paused, as I laid eyes on the most enticingly beautiful woman I had ever seen. My heart skipped a foolish beat, like it had done for the past seven years, at the sight of my wife. My fingers were itching, almost pleading to hold her and bask in her warm embrace, doing nothing but listening to her sleeping for the rest of the night. Like I always did. Quietly, I sauntered over to the edge of the bed admiring the tiny pout that curled on her lips as she inhaled a peaceful sigh. I sat by the edge of the bed, my tatted fingers instinctively reached over to her chin, tilting her head to the side, and I bent down to place a soft kiss by her temple. Mm. Her low hum vibrated from her throat, and she shifted slightly to the side. Instinctively, my large hands slid down her frame, coxing her soft skin with my tainted hands, and I placed a tattooed hand on her round stomach where our son was growing. Mine. Slowly, I bent down and placed a light kiss on her belly button, absorbing the sweet sound of pleasure that left her lips. Happy birthday, Topolina. My low, raspy voice whispered in the silent room, my dark eyes fixated on the way her sinfully long lashes fluttered against her tan skin, the tiny dip between her brows as she frowned. The cascade of her deep brown tendrils of hair spilled over the sheets, illuminating her gorgeous face in the moonlight, and I fell in love with her all over again. Like it was an unconscious action. Unable to help myself from touching her, I grabbed firm hold of her clear small fingers and tightly laced them with mine. How was your day, Tessero? I asked, and she made a little sound of displeasure shifting to the side. Um hum, seems like our boy has been quite a monster today. Out of nowhere, Wolf let out a loud bark suddenly jumping to his feet and started wadding towards the doorway. Instinctively I grabbed hold of the gun on the table and hid it behind my back, slowly moving towards the door before I slammed it open with force. Big Amber eyes pooled with tears, her pink lips quivering with fear, and I absorbed the wholesome sight of my daughter. Scared. Her quiet, gentle voice whispered, then she let out a low cry before it proceeded to increase gradually. Crap. Crap. She could start crying within a split second just by an unexpected sound those dark amber eyes, my eyes, would fill with heart-wrecking tears that absolutely crushed my heart. And I promised to protect her, I would do absolutely everything to protect my little girl. Shis. Come here, Bambolina. I spoke, my voice warm and soft filled with tenderness as I became cautious of my fragile daughter. 
My daughter was the softest, tiniest two-year-old I had ever seen and had completely managed to steal my heart the first time I held her.